Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going over Anji. This is going to be a whole masterclass video of how to play Anji. All of his buttons, all of his specials, all of his combos, all of his setups, all of his crazy things that you can oops, <laughs> be using to destroy your opponents online. Overall, I would say Anji is quite a, um, what I would call like a simple but powerful like fundamental character. He does a lot of things that are quite simple and is quite safe and does a lot of damage, but he also has a few gimmicky tools that he can use to really spice up his gameplay, and you gotta make sure you're doing that to make sure you keep your opponent on their toes, because when you keep your opponent on their toes, they die. So let me show you one like cool setup here that happens just from the opponent trying to mash on wake up. Oops. He tried to mash once after my combo, and boom, 80% of his life is gone. That, that is how you make RNG spicy. You throw in a lot of fancy little OTG setup things that make him like a little bit more interesting, like keep the opponent on their toes. You can do some wild stuff with RNG um, if you make sure you're paying attention to how your opponent is behaving, and it leads to some crazy damage stuff. Like just that. Your opponent tried to mash after I did throw once, and they like melted. And that's how you want to play Anji. You want to make your opponent melt because they're scared. Anyways, let's get into his buttons to start. So, his standing punch is probably one of the best standing punches in the game. It's a tiny bit slower than regular ones, but it doesn't matter because its hitbox is amazing. It hits really far in front of him, way further than most standing punches, and it's also reasonably high. So not only is it just a great like mashing tool, like when I'm running on my opponent, and maybe if I don't want to like commit to my like standing slash, which is a little bit slower, I can just do my standing punches, which, which honestly hit at a similar range, like obviously not as far, but like they cover like a pretty good portion of the screen, especially if I'm running in, I have momentum. I'm sliding in on the opponent and hitting them with these, it's super powerful. And they link into his best command normal, which is, well they don't link, they don't combo, but they cancel into his 6H, which is like, his best, it's his only command normal, but it's so useful, it's something you're going to be using a ton. And not only is it just a great mashing button, a great, like, spacing button, it's also an excellent anti-air, it's amazing as an anti-air. Let me make my opponent jump. Um, it hits them at basically all heights except the absolute peak, so as you can see here, if I do it right at their peak, but any other time, it hits them super consistently. And, because it's my 5P, I can just mash it. <laughs> and just do it a bunch of times, and depending on how high they are, I can hit it, like, up to four times. And it's crazy, and because it's my 5P, I can cancel it into things, like my Ko, or I can cancel it in even into my command normal. and get combos going. It's an amazing anti-air and it hits super far in front of him. So the opponent's trying to jump in like on you, like if pretend if they're jumping forwards. Like you can just stand there and be like, uh, no, 5P, because I can hit you from all the way over here and like I'm just gonna smack you out of the air and it's such an amazing anti-air. And because it's a 5P, it's also super safe. So I can just like, like press it like, oh, I missed. Oh, okay, never mind. I'll just, I'll just be blocking. And then like, it's super low risk, super high reward because it's just an amazing anti-air. Someone's trying to jump, boom whack them out of the sky. You can get a combo depending on, like, how close you are to the walls and what you want to do after it. And it's just, it's an amazing anti-air. You can go into so many things. It hits at basically, like, any height you'll want to anti-air someone at. And even if they are at the absolute peak, then you have the option of using your 6P, which um, isn't that great of an anti- oh, isn't that great of a move, but it does hit at the very tip of a jump, which is something your 5P doesn't. So, if your 5P ever has any problems, it's solved by your 6P. Now, for 6P, even though it's a good anti-air, because it has, you know, upper body invincibility and hits quite high, um, it alone, compared to other 6Ps, isn't that great, because you don't really get anything off of it, except for a single Fujin. Like, unless you're, like, right under your opponent, you're not gonna get a Ko. And sometimes you don't even get a Fujin. Like, so, you kind of just have to be lucky to get literally anything off of it. You don't get any follow-ups off of Fujin. Yeah, see, sometimes if it's, like, the perfect space, you can get a Ko, but that's nothing your 5P can't do. 
and like if you hit it on the ground, you don't get anything from it except for a Fujin. It's just not that great, and it doesn't hit particularly far forwards in front of him, and he can't like combo into it except for like off of a single very close, like standing peak. Like he has to be right in front of their face to combo into it. It just doesn't have too much use that the five P doesn't already cover. Now his Crouching P is basically the exact same, it has a very similar hitbox, it is a little bit not as far, but you know, it goes quite far out in front of him, and it's basically the same thing as your um, <clears throat> Standing P, except you know, you're crouching, you're a little bit lower down, you can't even anti-air with this one as well, and um, what's really good about your Standing P and your Crouching P is that even though they don't combo into these, and there is even a gap that they can be interrupted, um, you, like, because they're a mashable button, you can cancel them into themselves. You can just go like one button into your a 6H or two of them into your 6H. And this makes it practically impossible for your opponent to know when they are allowed to um, interrupt your 6H. Because you can just do two of them into your 6H. And yeah, basically all the time you can go super, super low risk, you can get your 6H out. And 6H is an amazing button, we'll get to it soon. But yeah, your crouching buttons are super amazing because they have great hitboxes. <laughs> great hitboxes and they can link super easily into a great command normal that lets you get all of your Fujin pressure and stuff going that, that um, Anji is very well known for. His jumping P is also quite similar. It has a really good hitbox and it's a super, you know, low commitment move because it recovers quickly and mainly you're going to use it as your, like, air-to-air. -air. So, like, if your opponent's going to jump at you, you can blah, 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 and whack them out of the air. Here, let me just show what that looks like if you haven't seen that before. So, like, if your opponent's jumping at you or, like, you jump at the same time as them, you just mash your, like, standing P's, your jump P's, and then if they're jumping at you, you get to hit them a bunch of times. And even if they block it, then they have to block these all the way down and then they're blocking your ground one as well. And then you do your ground one into your 6H, and then blah blah blah, and you get all your pressure going, and it's really good. Okay, now for his kicks. This is where it gets a little bit disappointing. His standing kick is kind of trash. Like, you're gonna have to use it a lot, because you have to use it in quite a few of his combos, but com compared to other characters' standing kicks, it's pretty bad. He can't cancel it into his low kick, he can't cancel it into himself, um, he can only cancel it into his um, sweep and his dust. And same goes for his low kick, he can only go into sweep and to dust. And also into his command normal, which is also very useful, but you can also do that with your standing punches, which is a lot safer of an option, because his standing kick is like not as fast and also has a bit more recovery. Um, but obviously you're going to be using these a lot in order to get his sweep, which is his hard knockdown. Then obviously you get to go in for your stuff, like your Shih Tzu, and then you can even go in for cool things like this, off of a hard knockdown. So... You are going to be using your kicks anyways, because you need to get your hard knock down. <laughs> so even though they're garbage, you're going to have to use them and just make do. His jumping kick um, is also kind of not that great. It hits very horizontal, so you have to do it super late if you want to hit a grounded opponent. And um, it does combo into his dust. But uh, yeah, nothing too noteworthy there. You can air dash cancel it if you want to, but again, you have to do it very late. Um, his standing close slash is... Uh, it's, I, think, I think it's a really good standing close slash. Some people say that it's not that good because its hitbox isn't that great. But um, I honestly think it's pretty good. You, obviously you're going to be using it a lot of your combos. It combos into his heavy slash and his fast slash and his sweep. And his low slash and you know all the normal stuff that a slash does. But it's also a pretty decent anti-air if you're feeling like being a bit more gung-ho with your anti-air. So if your opponent's jumping really close to you, like maybe they're trying to get a cross-up or something, or they're just like really on top of you for some reason, you can use this as an anti-air and obviously it's going to do a lot more damage than any of your other anti-air like, buttons. I think you can even get something like... Oops. Yeah, like this. So that's obviously a lot more damage than a normal <laughs> normal anti-air thing with like stand stampy stampy into Ko. But um obviously it's a lot more situational because that you're not gonna be in too many situations where you can just like use your close slash. But it is a pretty decent anti-air. It hits decently like above him and in front of him. So if you want to, you can use that as an anti-air. I don't disrecommend it. I think it's a pretty good option. <laughs> um but you know 
as a as a close slash, you know, it's a close slash. Obviously, you're gonna be using it in your damaging combos because it links into everything. You're gonna be using it in his linking it into his um, down heavy slash, which isn't a link that actually works, but um, it is a good block string. So see how this doesn't actually combo, but on block it is actually um, a guaranteed block string. So you can use it to go into Kujin and stuff on block, and yeah, it's pretty useful. And obviously you can cancel it into your command normal 6H, and it actually combos, which means you can get more damage than you would if you got a uh, slash into heavy slash, which only does 80 damage, whereas this is 83. So you can like, get a little bit extra damage by using that cool command normal that you have. His fast slash is... It's okay. It, it reaches decently far. It's a little bit slow. It's kind of like Nilia's fast slash. It's a little bit slow, but it does reach far, so you, w you can use it like when you're running up to like, you know, in the neutral to do things. But one of the things I hate about this move the most is that it doesn't link into Fujin. I can't go coast slash slash Fujin. It doesn't work. I have to go coast slash heavy slash Fujin in order to get that link. And it's just really frustrating because a lot of the time you get like, you get fast slashes. They don't link into your Fujin, so it just is so pointless. So like you can get this move off, but you don't get anything off of it. Because it's not like you're gonna cancel into Butterfly or cancel into Co. Like or even if you do, you're not like getting confirmed damage off of it. So it kind of like it doesn't matter if the opponent blocks it or it hits, it's not gonna combo into anything either way. So that's pro that's why I kind of don't really like this button, but you know, it does reach decently far. So you want to make sure you're kind of using it in ranges where you can hopefully link into your heavy slash, because then if you can go into your heavy slash, then you can actually get your combo stuff going, and it's a lot more exciting than if you just get a random slash and then they block the Fujin, and then you're like, oh, okay, well that's the end of that. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to be using it like, you know, when you're running in on the opponent, and just try to use it not at like, so like, its max range is like around here. But you don't really want to be using it around there too much. You want to use it a little bit closer so you can go into your heavy slash. Um, yeah. His low slash, um, or his 2S, um, is a pretty good crouching attack because he gets down really low. As you can see, he puts his head down as well. So he gets super low to the floor and has this pretty decent hitbox. Um, I don't know if it's a disjointed hitbox, but, you know, it's pretty good. It hits both sides. And, you know, you can just use it as a little poking tool. Um, you know, maybe going under some of your opponent's attacks and stuff. But once again, it does not combo into Fujin, so you want to be using it in ranges where you can combo into Heavy Slash. Into Heavy Slash. So yeah, and his Jumping Slash, as we've gotten into his Slash buttons now, it's actually quite good. Um, I'd say it's probably the what like, his Jumping Button that I use, like, close to the most, but that's probably his Jumping Heavy Slash. His Jumping Slash is also really good. It has a quite, like, a, a long hitbox. I think it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit longer than his jumping heavy slash, so he can hit the opponent from like a little bit further away than you would with your heavy slash. So if you're like trying to jump from like over here and reach your opponent, you have a high chance of doing it with your, uh, your slash. And you can actually, unlike his heavy slash, you can actually air, like dash after it, so you can... Like, if you get a hit too high, you can dash after it, which isn't something he can do off of some of his other jumping normals, which is kind of good. And, and just, you know, I know we'll mention, but yeah, it's a pretty good jump attack, and you can jump and cancel it if you want to do another one, but yeah, it's pretty good. Now, his heavy slashes. These are actually quite a bit more interesting. So, his regular heavy slash, pretty good, it's kind of slow, doesn't have tremendous range, but it's quite good. It's like, as long as it's close enough to be used after his regular slash, like, it's good enough, because you're not often going to be throwing this out on its own, because it's kind of slow. But, you know, it does good damage, it connects into Fujin, thank god, and that's basically all you need it for. You use it in combos, you use it in pressure, it's just part of your string, and you just want to be in ranges where you can always go into that, so that your Fujin can actually connect correctly. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it does hit both sides, so if your opponent, like, um, hey wait, I'm just gonna show an example real quick, but, for example, if your opponent is gonna do something that switches side somehow, so if he does, like, his heavy, his heavy DP, and I'm not sure which side I'm gonna punish on, I can just do this, and he was actually behind me, but I, like, either side he's on, I will be able to hit him with this move, so that's just kind of good for, in, like, some situations where, 
You're not sure which side the opponent's on. Maybe they have some like crazy crop cross up move. You can use this move to just be like, hey, I'm hitting both sides. And that's the same thing with his um, crouching slash. You can just throw that out if someone's like being weird or like maybe like with Faust doing his teleport, um, it'll hit both sides, which is really, really handy. But if anyone has a move that kind of puts them on like and you're not sure which side they're going to be on, just do this and then bam, you hit both sides, which can also be kind of good for characters if they're trying to like run over you and cross you up. You can just throw out your heavy slash if you're... Um, confident that they're not going to hit you with their jumping button before your heavy slash, it's good that you can hit both sides. <coughs> and then his down heavy slash is on paper kind of trash, because it's really slow and you can't combo into it from anything, um, like naturally, it just doesn't combo from anything, but it does do a big chunk of damage for a normal, or actually it's the same as that, but, <laughs> but what's really good is it has a lot of hits done, the opponent's just left there like flying in the air for a bit, and really, it's used in combos, so you can connect it into his code, which isn't something that you can do off of a lot of his moves. So, super good that he can do that, and that's really important to him, because that's what lets him do cool combos, and especially like in the corner and stuff. And in your combos, I'm sure you've seen his bread and butter combo, but you're going to be doing slash, uh, like close slash into the down heavy slash, because that just works super well in a jungle combo they just fall perfectly and they're getting bounced in the air then you can go into your Fujin or your Ko and it's just all very lovely and works very neatly when you do this. Um, I'm gonna make him stop doing that for a moment. <laughs> but yeah it's kind of not that great but one thing that is really good about it is that if the opponent is blocking This is actually a true block string, I believe. His close slash into low heavy slash. Um, the opponent can't interrupt that, which means if they do try to mash um, and like try and put a button out in between, because there is quite a big gap. So like maybe if they, they think you're trying to like, you know, stagger it or like go for a throw or something. So if the opponent does try to mash in in the middle of this, which is a true block string, not on combo. It's not a true combo, but. If they do try to mash on that, then you will get your counter hit, obviously. And then off of counter hit, um, just combo into it. So you can do stuff like this. So yeah, here we go, that's a combo. And yeah, super beefy damage, so if the opponent does decide to not block your, um... If they try to mash out of your thing, when it's a block string, basically blah blah blah. So if you think your opponent's gonna block, you can go for this. And a lot of the time, if, I'm, if I've got my opponent blocking, and I, you know, do my my uh, like Fujin pressure and they're blocking all my stuff I will go for like if I go for this and I'm trying to go for pressure I go for stuff like this because that is a really slow button because they might think then that my, my pressure is ended and then you've done all this stuff and their risk is getting really high so <laughs> next time you get a hit after doing that whole sequence they're kind of gonna die and if especially if you get that counter hit from their um that oops oh no <laughs> From them trying to mash out, you get some real big damage. Now let's just make him stop blocking. <clears throat> okay, so that's his down heavy slash, and as we mentioned before, his jumping um, heavy slash is basically his best jumping air attack. You can be using it a lot because it hits really low below him. Um, obviously not at the peak of his jump, but like anything after he's hit the peak, he's gonna hit the opponent. Uh, it's just a really good jumping attack. You're gonna be like dashing around a lot, just doing this. Instant air dashes into heavy slash, and then if they block it, you know, you go into some Fujin pressure, or you can, you know, go into a sweep and do stuff like this. It's just his, like, his best jump in for, like, just getting, nailing the opponent down and making him stand there, because it hits quite low below him. And now to finish his dust buttons. Obviously his sweep, um, nothing too notable about it. It doesn't have a huge hitbox, you know. It's a sweep, he gets low to the ground. It looks kind of cool how he like <laughs> rests on his arm. But um, obviously, just like every sweep, it's a hard knockdown. So he has time to throw out his butterfly. Um, you want to kind of do it from not too close, or else the opponent can like DP you. Um, if they have a DP, otherwise it doesn't really matter. You also don't want to do it too quickly, or else the butterfly will just go straight behind them. So you know, throw that out and delay the butterfly a little bit. And then you get to go in for your butterfly pressure and go wild and blah blah blah. This is the Anji stuff that we we all know for. And don't worry, we're gonna get into that. Um, his dust. Um, 
just like his sweep. It kind of looks cool, but it isn't actually that great. Like the actual hitbox, it doesn't have it doesn't have a great hitbox at all. It's pretty small, but um, you can get some cool like mix-ups going. Like if I do something like this, they think that I'm gonna finish the combo, but then I actually go in for my um, dust in the middle there. And off of his dust. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the optimal is, but you can uh, you can get something like that. That's pretty decent damage. 202 on Kai, pretty good. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's an overhead. It's unsafe, but it's big damage. Uh, the hitbox isn't great, but it looks really cool with the umbrella and stuff. And his jump dust is also his umbrella move, but it's quite an interesting jump attack because as you can see, it changes his like jump trajectory. So even if I'm like dashing forward. If he does this, it stops him in place, does this little, like, bump into the air, and then he just falls straight down. And depending on how high you are, you can actually get... Yeah, you can actually get other jumping attacks after it. So it's actually quite safe to use, and he can block, like, pretty quickly after it. But, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good jump attack, and it's really good for, like, changing your trajectory. So if you see your opponents trying to, like, anti-air you, or like trying to like air to air you, you can throw this out because the hitbox goes like straight in front of him. So, <coughs> sorry, it works as a really good anti air, um, as a really good air to air, um, for the fact that it hits straight in front of him and it stops him like flying forward. So if you're like launching yourself at the opponent, and you realize they're trying to do something, you can be like, whoop, hold that, dust, and then like stop flying forwards. Because as you can see, if I was like back here, and I did my air dash, I'm straight in his face. But if I do it. I stop early and land all the way over here. So it's pretty interesting. And it also sends the opponent flying and causes us a wall bounce, which can lead to some really fancy combos. Um, but a lot of the time I don't do those because they're kind of complicated. But as you can see there, like when the opponent bounces off of the wall, you can get some extra extensions off of it. And you're going to be doing it quite a lot after these curl in the corner. Oh no, I have Recorder's Curse. I'm gonna mess up every combo, aren't I? Yeah. So you can get it after Ko because you can, you know, cancel things off of Ko. <clears throat> and it's also his most damaging um, air jump attack, so you're gonna be using that in combos if you wanna get max damage. But, I think that is all. Oh no, it's not. He has one command normal that we haven't mentioned, and that is his 6H. And this is arguably his most important tool because. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. You're just gonna be using it all the time. It reaches super far. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Um, so as you can see, it reaches super far. It has is three hits. It can hit from the round start position. Um, you're not really gonna be using it on round start because it's kind of slow. But basically, this is like what you're really gonna be using in footsies because it kind of hits like above him. As you can see, the fans kind of go in the air. So if you're lucky, you can kind of work as an anti-air. It has three hits, so you don't have to time it perfectly. You can just go in like. This is the real, like, if people are calling Anji a gorilla, this is a really gorilla move. Because, like, kind of like Giovanna's triple kicks, if you've got momentum and you, like, are running up and do it, he just, like, is sliding forward with this, like, long, super active, three-hitting hitbox. And, like, you just got no hope of, like, not getting hit by it. So he's just launching himself in on you. And if I do get hit, then boom, combo, you're gonna die. And... If they block it, well, you know, it's going into Fujin and you know, you can just be super safe and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's super good. And you're gonna be connecting it off of his, like, his punches, a random kick, basically anything that, like, isn't, like, his fast slash. You're gonna wanna, like, try and go into this as much as you can. So, fast slash, you're always gonna wanna try and go into his heavy slash. <clears throat> but, like, anything else, you kind of wanna go into his, um, his 6H, because. It's just his best move. It does the most damage, does more damage than his standing heavy. Um, and you can link it off of his kicks, and or not link it, but you can cancel it off of his punches and kicks. So you can just go into it a lot easily, and if the opponent happens to get hit by it, then bam, you get your combo. If they block it, well then, you know, Anji is very safe and you can, you can go for a lot of pressure. So, yeah. That, that's his 6H, it's a, his really most useful tool, and one you're gonna be almost spamming, but I, I won't say spamming, It'll, but may, maybe spam it. <laughs> it's, it's really good. But, um, yeah, so now just generally how he's gonna cancel 
his like buttons Dang. into each other. Um, let me just put the opponent onto block for a second. So basically, like when you're doing your attacks, like maybe if I'm running in for this, go in for that. If the opponent tries to mash, it like either they will mash successfully and hit me out of it, but a lot of the time they won't, and it'll either be a counter hit or it'll just hit them cleanly because they think I'll go for like three of these and then go into it, like one, two, three, well, one, two, three into it. But I can go one into it or two. So you can do stuff like this super easily, and it's just a really good, really good move that you can just use to really lock the opponent down. And because it's three hits, it's a super easy hit confirm. So if I do this, like, I can easily see if the opponent got hit by it. And if they did, I get to go for a combo. Even if they didn't, I'm probably going to do, like, the same thing. Or if they didn't, I can go for, like, different Fujin pressure stuff. Maybe make myself do the leap, or make myself do the plus and block thing, or blah blah blah. We'll get into that stuff very soon. But, yeah. It's just a super good move that you basically are going to be doing all the time, and you're really going to want to make sure you abuse it, basically. <laughs> so, now that we've covered all of his normals, uh, oh yeah, also his throw, I guess that's part of his dust series. Uh, you know, it's a pretty good throw, they le actually leave you really close, which is pretty good for him, because you can throw out your butterfly, his shih tzu, um, and obviously his throw, just like everyone else, is a hard knockdown. But it's also good that he leaves them really close and like really plus, because he can get super easy OTGs off of this. Like, I think he can even get like heavy slash, like if he wanted to. Which is super good because, as I had the opponent on um, <clears throat> counter attack before, if I have them doing like their fastest button, like crouching, um, like the, something that isn't a throw, or even a throw, I, I believe it works against. Here, let me do it just to show. Um, he gets really good OTG stuff if he goes for something like this, because then that becomes a counter hit and you're getting huge damage. So the opponent's trying to throw on wake up and they're melting for it. So they tried to throw once after I did my throw like OTG. Like they tried to wake up buttons or like they tried to press anything on wake up except for a, like a DP. And like they've almost lost like 80% of their life bar or that probably was 80%. Like they just melt if you get a successful OTG. So you really want to make sure you're keeping that in mind. So his throw is very good for that. And obviously, as I'm sure everyone's seen, it's a really good opportunity for him to throw out his butterfly, and you get butterfly shenanigans. Okay, and now that we've talked about all of his like regular normal buttons and stuff, I guess we can quickly say his dash, you know, it's pretty normal. His air dash, it's pretty normal. His back dash, pretty normal. <laughs> all pretty basic there. Um, okay, so now let's get into his specials, which is where he gets a little bit more interesting. So, let's start off with his butterfly. Because, um, I don't know, it's probably his most infamous things. Actually, I think he's got, like, all of his tools are infamous, but butterfly, shih tzu. It's a very slow attack. I think it's like 100 startup frames, 107, I believe. I don't actually know, but I think I've heard that somewhere. But basically, super slow moving butterfly thing that goes across the screen, and you can run up behind it. But, um, unless your opponent is being super patient and waiting, like, far away back here, um, you're not going to be throwing out in the neutral too much, but... Honestly, sometimes I do. Like, if the opponent's just doing nothing, I'm like, well, what am I gonna do? If they're giving me time to throw out the butterfly, you know, may as well. Because you can run up behind it, and if it does hit the opponent, you get some, like, you know, beefy damage. And if they do just stand there and block it, then, you know, you get to do your Fujin pressure. But what's really good about throwing out the butterfly is it makes the opponent so scared, because it's this two-hitting, super slow projectile, super plus on block, it just leads into crazy pressure. So, there's basically two types, or three, t there's three options of what you can do, well, of what opponents do when you throw out your Shih Tzu. They either mash and get completely beat out by the butterfly, which is great for you because then you can do like some cool combos like this. And you can like use the butterfly to connect like all of your stuff together and get like cool Fujin combos. Or, you know, you can just go in and do your combos if they get hit by it, like just your normal stuff. <clears throat> or, you have your super patient person that just like, stands there and like, blocks it every time, and if they do block it every time, that's also super great for you, because you get like, easy, easy pressure then. 
because um, a lot of people don't know how to like get out of it easily. So, you know, you just get like guaranteed pressure. You can run up, do a throw in between both of the hits. There is actually a gap there. Like, so after the first hit, your opponent can actually hit you for quite a while. So you do need to make sure you're being careful and not just like running in on the opponent. So make sure, you know, if they are trying to attack through there, you can't just like run up and let the two hits hit and then start doing attacks like this because your opponent will hit you. But um, you know, if you do something like run up kick and then in between the hits and then go for your pressure, then you can do that. Or if you just do like boot in <laughs> and then do something like that, you can totally do that. Or if they're blocking the first hit, you can throw them before the second hit. Or if they block them both, then you can throw them after the second hit, after quite a while, if they think you're gonna just gonna go for normal thing, you can push them out of the way. It's basically just like Pray to God if they are trying to block the Fujin. It's really good for you if they're trying to block it. Because, if they're trying to block the butterfly. Because you can just do so much stuff. Obviously you can run up like and do your dust. And that is actually kind of effective because like there's all this blue particle effects everywhere and then all of a sudden there's orange and you can go your lows, you can go your low overhead. Or you can, you know, just do normal pressure stuff where you go slash, heavy slash, Fujin stuff. <coughs> you don't have to run and cancel. You could go slash, heavy slash, boot in into the plus unblock one. Basically, you just get your opportunity to do, like, literally anything. So, if they're blocking it, super good. But make sure you're being careful if they are trying to mash in between it, because you will get hit. And if you do get hit, the butterfly disappears and you lost all of your pressure. So, make sure by the first time you do it, just see if your opponent's going to try and hit you in between the two hits. And if they don't, great. Happy days. You get to go mad on your on your pressure, but if they are trying to interrupt you, make sure you do something like a kick in between, or just like something that like hits in between both of the hits so that they aren't interrupting you, <clears throat> and you're holding them down in the pressure. But And the third type option that people have a lot of the time, especially when you throw it out in neutral, is to jump over it, and if they do jump over it, well then they're gonna be like around this range and just like run over it or like they jump and then try and dash over it because you know they just don't want to deal with it they don't want to block it they don't want to get hit by it obviously so they just jump over it and like try and dash at you and then that's your perfect opportunity to use your pretty good anti-airs so like you can run up behind it and use your five p's so like if you're standing on top of it basically like as you run and they try to jump over it you can five p the heck out of them out of the air or you can air to air them with your jump p's and just like smack them out of the air get them out of there or as you saw he also has his Ko, which is a, like an amazing anti-air, like almost instant. I use it more often than the 5P actually. It's really awesome and it does a lot of damage. It's a hard knockdown. So yeah, if they try to jump over it, then you have your option of this. And if they do block your Ko in the air, then you're plus on block and like, yeah. So just make sure when you're throwing out your Shih Tzu, you're paying attention to what your opponent is doing to it. So are they trying, are they just standing there and blocking it? Cool, go in for your pressure. Know what kind of pressure you can do on your opponent depending on if they are the kind of person that mashes out of it while they're blocking, or they just stand there super patiently. Um, know if your opponent is just going to get hit by them, by it, because they're like an idiot, and know that you can just go in for your combos and you can even do some fancy combos. Um, we'll talk more about combos later. Um, and know if they're the kind of person that really likes to jump over it, because then you can go for your anti-airs and, you know, smack them out of your skies. You just, it's really good for locking the opponent down, you just need to make sure you do it correctly. So, I think the next move we have to go over is obviously his Fujin. Arguably just as infamous as his butterfly. So, his Fujin. We all know it's down forward, heavy slash. On its own, pretty basic, but it's the follow ups that makes it super scary. So he has a slash follow up that is your follow up that you're going to be using 90% of the time. You're going to be using it, like whether it's on block or on hit, you want to be doing the slash follow up because it's the only follow up that actually. Okay, let me make him stop blocking, please. It's the only follow up that actually combos. So, like, if you land a Fujin, you want to go for this so that you get the damage. Like, if I just do this, no, I get a really decent chunk of damage there. And if I run up, I can get even more damage. And, so, you know, I'm getting beefy damage like that. But if I do, like, these other follow-ups, they don't actually combo. None of them actually lead to, like, guaranteed combos. So, you know, if you're just wanting to grab your damage, go for the slash. 
and it's also um, like safe on block. I believe there are ways that you can interrupt it and certain characters can punish it by doing like RC stuff, but basically it's safe. It's your safe ender that like if they're blocking your thing you just go for Blumbla into Nagiha, the slash follow up, and there's no gap there unlike all of the other attacks they have gaps like because they're very slow. This one, it's fast, it's low, it combos, it's the one you're going to be using all the- basically all of the time because it's- it's just the best option. So, yeah, whether it's on combo and you're doing, you know, his basic bread and butter combos, or whether it's on block and, you know, they're just standing there blocking it all, it doesn't have a gap, so you can just go boom, boom, they're still blocking. And it's also safe, and it's a low, so like you can just throw that out, you're safe, they blocked kind of a mix-up, and like, easy games. So yeah, make sure you're using Slash most of the time, and don't be the dumb aunties that are doing this most of the time. So this is his Heavy Slash follow-up, which is this slow overhead, like, it's quite slow compared to see how quick the Slash version is, that's a low, and it actually combos. This Heavy Slash follow-up is an overhead, but it's very slow and it doesn't combo and it's unsafe. It's very, very unsafe and it leaves you straight in front of the opponent. It's very easy to punish. So really, you only want to be using this in, like, maybe if you've landed, a, like, a combo. You can use it in combos like that, especially in the corner, because you can, you know, keep bouncing the opponent. So, like, you can use it like that in the corner to, like, keep bouncing them in the corner. But you don't really want to be using it just like regularly on hit, unless you're really sure that the opponent just like isn't gonna get, isn't gonna block overhead. Because you know, a lot of the time they're gonna be blocking low, because if you are playing RG correctly, you're gonna be using the slash follow up most of the time. So, you know, they're getting used to you just constantly going, oh yeah, slash, oh yeah, do the safe slash, safe slash, safe slash, safe low slash, and then randomly, suddenly you throw in this overhead, and then boom, you get this whole combo off of it because they thought that you were going to be doing the low slash again. So that's where you make it tricky. So it's really not an option you want to go for a lot because it's unsafe, it's slow, like they can, they can just mash out of it, they can punish it, they can mash at any point of it because it's so bad and slow and unsafe. But it is an overhead, so if they are blocking low and they're just like getting used to blocking you low all the time, then you do get to go for the overhead. And yeah, and as you just saw, if they do get hit by the overhead, you do get hella damage. You can go for a combo like this, and they kind of they kind of melt a bit. That's a lot of damage just for getting hit by a single overhead with zero zero meter spent there. And his other option is this P follow-up. Which isn't a combo follow-up at all, like, unlike the, the, um, like, slash and heavy slash follow-ups, which can be used to get combos, the punch follow-up just, like, it's just not for combos, like, <laughs> I've seen some people try to do, like, purple RC stuff to combo off of it, but it just doesn't work. It's mainly used, um, it's, it's plus on block. It's plus on block, that's all it is. It's very plus on block, mind you, but, um, so, you know, if your opponent is blocking Fujin, and just like the overhead version, if you think your opponent is getting really used to blocking your um, your quick low slash, because they're just used to you going like blah 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 blah, low, low slash, <clears throat> then you can throw in a cheeky shin, a punch follow up, which is very plus on block, but there is a gap and they can mash out of it. Oopsie. <clears throat> So, if they decided to, like, or, I, actually, I don't know if they can mash out of it, because it leaves you at a space where, like, your crouching normals won't hit him, and, like, they have to have pretty far-reaching, um, like, 5Ps or 6Ps in order to get out of there, so a lot of characters can't actually mash out of it, but you can, like, jump out of it or jump over it to punish him. So, it's just another, it's just another mix-up, like, in the list. So you can throw that, and it's super blast on block. So you can throw that, and then you almost get, I don't know if it's guaranteed, I don't know exactly how plus it on block it is, but a lot of the time, I actually just go for my heavy slash, and that gets a counter hit, because the opponent decides to mash after all that time, and I go for my heavy slash, and that gets me a counter hit, and then I get a huge combo off of it. So, honestly, I suggest just doing that, doing this and going into heavy slash, or if you want to be a little bit more safe and you go for something a bit faster, you can obviously go for your regular slash, but you're not going to get a combo from that, unfortunately, unless they mash and it's a counter hit. Or I think you can go for your standing kick, depending on how close you are, like maybe you do something like this. Like if you're really close to them, you can like get a kick, which is probably your fastest reaching option. Like it. Or if you're like really close to the corner and you get the shin, you can like do like 
stuff like that with your punching normals. And if your opponent does start respecting, like if they do just block this and they're not going to try and mash after your super plus on block, because like last time they did that they got hit by a super big counter hit combo. Um, here, let me show you what the counter hit combo could look like. So like they just block my shin, just like pretend they, they just block that and then they decide to mash and then I hit them with my heavy slash. Uh, <clears throat> I hit them with my heavy slash. And I dropped the combo, but that was still huge damage already, and I didn't even get the wall break, and you can see how that adds up. So you can get it into your big combos, and it's super free, and blah 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 blah, it's really good. And, uh, yeah, it's basically, it's just super plus on block, and if they do start respecting it, and they're blocking what you do afterwards, because they don't want to get hit by the counter hit combo, if they do block that, you can just run up throws, and then you get to go for your wild your wild Oki stuff, like whether it's the butterfly or the twisting Fujin or blah 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 blah. There's so many things that you can do from it and it it, it gets ridiculous. It gets it gets pretty ridiculous. To like run up throw if they decide to like block after the plus on block, which is what you should do. It um you know, when you're plus on block, the opponent should block to like not get hit by you, but if they do do that, then you get to go for a throw. It's really scary stuff. And the final option that he gets off of Fujin is kick follow-up, which is where he does this little jump. And he says something very loudly. And he does this little leap, and a lot of the time... No, all of the time, it's actually fake. Like, he's never actually plus on block. He's always punishable. They can always interrupt you before you can do anything. I think that they can actually even, like, punish the jump if they block the Fujin. So, like, it's not real. But like I said, he's got a lot of gimmicky things that like if you throw them in there just like once in a while, it makes your gameplay quite a lot more spicy and you can really catch the opponent off guard. So like if I'm doing stuff like this, maybe they think I'm going to go for my, you know, regular bread and cup butter combo and go for stuff like this. Not like that, that's not his combo. But like if they think I'm going to be doing good for stuff like that and then all of a sudden I just like decide to not spend any meter and I just do that. I get 80 damage on top of the, like, 100, I get 180 damage, which is basically a full combo. It is a full combo, out of just going for this and then doing the mix-up, doing the little leap into a throw. And, because, you know, they were just sitting there, they're like, oh, crap, I got hit, I'm gonna take this big Anji combo. And then you actually don't go for a combo, you go for a little leap instead and go for a throw. Or then if they think you're gonna go for a throw, then, you know, obviously, strike throw mix-ups, you can do the same thing again. And then you just get to go all the mix, get big damage get lovely stuff. It's really good. But you have to make sure you use it sparingly because, you know, they can mash out of it. It is, it isn't real. Like, it isn't proper pressure because they, you know, <laughs> it's just fake. They can mash out of the jump. But it's something that you want to make sure you're using because you want to make sure you're keeping them on their toes. And speaking of keeping them on their toes, you can make it even scarier with Fujin mix-ups because you can delay things a lot. So see how if I just do the slash follow up and like mash it, it goes out pretty quickly. <coughs> Basically straight afterwards he does a slash and it combos. I can actually delay it a little bit. And it does still combo that, but as you can see I did do it a little bit later. And I can actually do it so late that it doesn't actually combo. And it actually looks like the animation's over, like it looks like I'm recovered and walking back. And then he does the slash, wait. Like look. He's, he's, he's already put his like fans away. See how they like shrink down and then he like puts them away? They shrink down and then you can press slash again. So the opponent thinks that it's over and then you press slash and you catch him off guard. It happens, it happens so much and I love it so much. The opponent always gets hit by this. And basically, if you're trying to open your opponent up, because like he doesn't have two great overheads, like apart from, you know, obviously his dust. So you kind of have to rely on like doing like weird pressure mix up stuff. And so much of the time does this work. So like your opponent's blocking, and they think you just do a raw Fujin and leave it like that, because you like delay it for so long, and then you do the slash. And then you hit them with the slash, and then you get to go in for a full combo after it if you're like RC, and it's crazy, I love it. And they always get hit by it. But what makes it really scary is that because you can delay that timing so much, um, it can actually become a similar time to the overhead. So see how much I delay it. And if I do this instantly, it's like... Bum, 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 bum. And then if I do it, like, with the slash... Bum, 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 bum. 
I can make them hit at around the same time. Obviously, it's still reactable because there's a different animation. Like, there's all this, like, yellow particles and stuff. But, you know, especially if you're playing online, people's reactions aren't going to be perfect. And especially if you're, like, playing against, like, beginner players, like, the timing in between both of these things hitting at very similar times if you delay that is really scary and that allows you to get the overhead a lot more because if they or the or get the low a lot more because they think that like oh it's been a so much time i'll just block overhead because a lot of the time you know the slash is quicker so they just block low first and then block overhead but if you delay the low like that then you catch their knees with the low and you get to go in for a full combo and stuff or they think that like oh you know you're delaying stuff and then you get to go in for the overhead. It just it allows his mix-up to be so much better than it normally is and you, you gotta make sure you're using it because it's super powerful. And like you're not really gonna want to be using like like the jump or the P follow-up like delayed because like it's already slow so you wouldn't want to like do it slowly or else there's just a huge gap there. And you're not really gonna want to delay the overhead either because like the opponent's gonna have mashed out by then, and there's not really a point in delaying it. And same with the jump. It's the only one you're really gonna wanna be um, using is like the heavy slap, is the slash follow up. Because, you know, it's safe. So, like, even if they do get hit by it and you don't have any meter, um, you know, you just hit them. And if they do block it, then, like, so what? It's safe. Like, you've, you've mixed them up a little bit, you've made them think a little bit more, because, like, it's not coming out instantly. You're putting out really slow, so now they're getting mixed up with the overhead and everything, and. It's just getting really scary, so yeah. Make sure you use the delay off of Fujin. And the last part of Fujin, yes, I know, there's so many aspects to Fujin, is that you can actually hold it down. And he does this little twirl stuff at the start. And we'll talk about what the twirling or the spinning is um, with his next special move. But basically, he gets to add this special move, um, which is just the twirl, but he gets to add it onto the beginning of his Fujin and basically charge up his Fujin to make it, I don't know, it doesn't do more damage, but as you can see, that's regular Fujin, charged Fujin, launches the opponent up across the screen. You can also get a combo off of it meterlessly then. And you can do something like this. So if they get hit by the charged Fujin, you can do something like this. Uh, oops. And there you go. Meterlessly, by the way. That was there <laughs> no meter was spent there, and I got 205 damage from like a little bit closer than mid screen. So pretty crazy stuff. And obviously, like after you charge Fujin, you don't have to do the jump. Oh yeah, by the way, um, if you didn't see what I do here to get this combo is I do the little jump because they get sent fl so flying away. Like I'm not gonna get any of my other follow ups like the overhead or anything. Or maybe I can get the overhead if I'm super late, but whatever. You can do the jump and then he jumps at them and then you get to follow up with your regular buttons and that's really really cool. I love that. But um. If they do end up blocking it, well then, you can just go for the low, and it's just like the ball. So, you know, may as well. And what the twirl does, other than making it launch them way way higher into the air, um, is it actually gives him what is called a guard point at the start, which is basically armor, if or invincibility. <coughs> and, uh, that, that, that's just kind of wild. So if I put the opponent to, um, do an attack, so if I have him like just do a standing punch when he wakes up so see he's going to do a standing punch as soon as he wakes up now if i do this that was my fujin that was my fujin input and then because it eats the move it goes into this like upwards twirl which like shows you that like the opponent didn't attack and like you successfully like parried them basically and depending on what move they do if you eat it it's like makes it a lot more punishable so, particularly for heavy buttons, like slash, heavy slash, and dust buttons, they can become super, super punishable um, if they get caught by your parry spin. Um, so, if, for example, I make him do standing heavy slash, that's going to be a super easy punish for me. Oopsie. So if they hit me while I'm doing the 12 part, not the, not the whole, not the actual Fujin, just the 12, I get to go in for a super easy punish and I can get a full punish combo going like that. It's super amazing, because like that also means you can throw it out in neutral, because it basically adds invincibility to the start of Fujin. So like you throw that out, and if they happen to throw an attack at you, like maybe it's a projectile, Kai throws his projectile, I'll just spin straight through it, it won't hit me, it won't hurt me, nothing happens, and I just get to go straight through it. And 
because they hit you as well, um, you don't actually get to do the full Fujin, so you are totally safe if they do hit you while you're trying to do the Fujin. And not only are you totally safe, most of the time you're so safe that you get to punish them. It's, it's really crazy, and I kind of love it. And then if they do, like, they end up not pressing a button, then boom, you've just landed a Fujin, and maybe you're getting a combo going, and or maybe they blocked it, and, you know, you just get to keep yourself safe, or you get to use the plus one block thing, or blah 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 blah. It's really amazing that you can use such an awesome pressure mix-up tool like Fujin, and then add invincibility, or... No, it's not technically in invincibility, because you can throw the spin, but, um, you're basically invincible against normal and projectiles, at the beginning of Fujin, and that's just kind of wild. And then if they do get hit by it, then you get this cool combo going after it. And it's just crazy. It's just so cool. It's so cool. And yeah, he can keep himself safe. He can just throw this out. It's it's wild. Now, I've been talking about Fujin for far too long. Let's talk about his co. Um, actually, no, let's talk about this, because we basically just talked about it. But basically, his down, back, down forward kick uh, I don't know what it's actually called, but it's basically just the twirl. Um, so it's like the start of the Fujin that we did here, except he doesn't do any attack after it, he just does the spin. And you can actually hold it down for a different amount of time, so if I just do it, like, quickly and release it, he just does this little t tiny spin here. But if I hold it down, he'll go for a little bit longer, and he'll twirl for a bit longer. Now, why is this useful? It's hella useful. So. After he does the 12, so but keep in mind, while he does the 12, he's basically completely invincible to anything except throws. So he can just throw that out, and he's like, boom, uh, okay, I'm invincible, and he can basically cancel it, like, straight into block. There's a tiny bit of recovery at the end of it, but it's so small, so, like, it doesn't matter. No one, I've never been punished by the end of this thing. <clears throat> I think I've seen some people be punished by it, but, like, the only thing you should worry about being punished by is, like, a throw. Like, you can just throw this out, and you can just, like, be invincible for a little while to get in on the, on the opponent. Which is super effective against characters um, that really try to keep you out, like Kai or maybe um, Axel. So you can just throw this out, and you're just, like, twirling in on the opponent, invincibly. And you just get to be in on top of them, and it's super great. So, like, if I've done something like my fast slash, and they block it, and I don't want to go into Fujin for some reason, like, and I think they're gonna press a button afterwards, I can just go for my 12, and if they do stand there, and, like, they don't press a button, then, like, I'm just in their face, I can go for a throw, which is the, you know, the fastest button in the game, like, as soon as I'm not invincible, uh, whoop, throw. Or, if they think I'm gonna throw, then I can go for this. And go for combos. But, like, invincible, invincible, invincible throw. It's crazy that you can do something like that, and if they, and if they do press a button, um, like we showed before. Oops. <laughs> See, th that was him countering the end of it. So there is recovery on the end. So you can't just use it completely willy-nilly. But, like, basically you can. So as you saw there, if I just, like, pretend this is happening after my fast slash. So someone blocks my fast slash and I just go, like, into like this. And then they just, like, try to press the button as, um, to, like, as a reversal. I can just twirl into their face. And if they use a heavy button, like a heavy slash or, um, or a slash or even a lot of dust buttons... I just get a clean punish for it. And even if they do something that is a little bit faster, like a... Oh, if he does, for example, uh, a kick. I can't actually punish it because it does recover it, like, um, you know, faster than his, than his heavy slash. So I don't get a proper punish there. But, because I'm straight in his face just doing my twirling there, I can just get a throw. And that actually was a punish because throws are so fast. But even if it's a standing punch, it's not going to be a real punish, but there's nothing your opponent can do about it, basically, because it's just so quick that, like, it's the fastest button in the game, and you're there, you're right in their face, just twirling at them. You can just do a throw, and it's almost guaranteed. It's ridiculous, and I love it. So, yeah, wild stuff here. And if you do think they're going to punish the recovery of it, obviously you can do, like, a PRC if you really want to, but, like, come on. I doubt your opponent's going to be punishing the end of that. Uh, successfully. And if you do think they're gonna, like, if you're doing this a lot and you're, like, doing the full, like, Hell's Twirl and, like, twirling for a lot, and then, like, being in their face and throwing, if the opponent starts to realize they're doing that, they're gonna start and try and throw it, because you can throw the Twirl. It's not invincible to throws. So you can do, then what you can start doing is these little, these tiny Twirls, and, like, just jumping out of them. So, like, instead of holding it down and going the whole way, you can just go, or go into a backdash, or go into, into jump. And then if they do try to do a throw, then you get, like, a big counter combo from doing your landing button. And then you get huge 
<clears throat> big damage for countering their throw, and so you can kind of like fake them out, and then like, because the back dash is invincible to throws, because they do that little like jump back. So like you can do that, and then jump back, and then dodge their throw, and like kind of fake them out, so they think you're going to keep doing the 12, but then you just do a little one, instead of doing the big long one, and it's just wild. I love this move so much, and I think people should use it a lot more than they do. <clears throat> okay, and for his last move, we have Ko. Ko, just like Fujin, also has the um, optional tw um, spin at the beginning of it, so it can be charged up. But it is his, like, kind of like a DP, except not really. It's not a DP motion, it's just down forward slash. And it also doesn't hit grounded opponents, it only hits them if they in the air. So you can connect it naturally off of his sweep and his 2M, 2H. And um, after long, like, if the opponent's in the air for a long amount of time, you can actually do the charged version, which does do a little bit more damage. So as you can see here, if I just do it regularly, um, I get 104. Actually, I don't know if it does more damage, but it has a different, um, like, hit stun. So if I do it like this, it is just as quick, leaves the opponent kind of close, and doesn't launch them as far into the air. Or I can hold it down, and it leaves me, like... It launches them higher into the air so I can run up on them and like kind of get some like OTG stuff because they've, they've got like a lot more hit stun. I can even go for a heavy slash there so <laughs> like you're so plus it's kind of ridiculous but like off of something like your sweep you can't actually do the held version because it doesn't come out fast enough but this move is one hell of an anti-air it's almost I have no idea how fast it is but like <laughs> I feel like it has to be in the like five frames it is so fast I honestly use it like as an anti-air more than any of my oops no um any of my other buttons because like it's just so quick and it hits unlike unlike his standing like standing punch which like is really amazing and a lot of times you will be using like just regular buttons because you know it's a lot easier to just press one button than do like your whole input for a special move but unlike his 5p which can miss like if they're at the very peak of their jump or like it can go over their head if they're landing. His like, his co, it just hits. It hits everywhere. If I do it from over here, it'll hit. If I do it from right under him, it'll hit. If I do it when he's really low, it'll hit. Like the absolute peak of his jump, it hits. Like even from like over here, it hits. It hits from everywhere. Like even if you accidentally like go under them, like, and it has two hits as well, so if somehow the first one misses, or the second one misses, like, it's a high chance that one of them will hit, because they've got such huge hitboxes. Like, even if I, like, do it out here, I think the opponent's gonna jump towards me, and they actually just jump straight in the air. I end up getting the anti-air anyways, because they get hit by the second hit of it. It's wild! And if you do react that it, like, hits them, like, obviously you can get a combo from it. And, um... You can actually get a bit of a better combo if you um, just do like a non-hitting RC, so if I do something like that, oh, depending on how close they are. Uh, oh, oops, I thought it would have been worse about there. But basically, like, if you see they get hit by it, you get a combo, but a lot of the time I don't bother like spending the meter on it, because Ko is a hard knockdown. No matter how you hit them, whether it's off of a sweep, or like off of his de crouching heavy slash. When you finish your combo in Ko, it's a hard knockdown, which is wild. Really, really wild. Because a lot of characters, they can only get hard knockdowns off of a throw. Wow, that's well timed. Or a sweep. But Anji can just end any of his combos in a hard knockdown, which is super important for a character like him with his butterfly, because he can just get a hard knockdown super easily, and so if I ever end in Ko, I have enough time to throw out my butterfly, and as you saw there, he's still trying to do his, um, his wake up kick. He get he got countered for that, because I had so much time, I could throw out my butterfly, he didn't even have time to throw out his kick. Like, it's crazy. And he can just, like, all of his combos, because they all kind of, like, can always be ended in this, he can just always throw out his butterfly and get easy OP off of like almost any situation. It's wild. It's crazy. It's so good. And like even if you're not like if your butterfly pressure isn't working out on the opponent, like maybe they're DPing a lot, or they're they're someone that just really knows how to deal with the butterfly, a hard knockdown is a hard knockdown. So like unlike something like um 
like that with the opponent, or just like Fujin. See how the opponent just does like this instant roll when they hit the ground? That's like a non-hard knockdown. And they just like instantly roll away, and you don't really have time. Like, I can't really pressure them because they like roll away and stuff. But if I get my Ko, they're lying on the ground. I get so much time, so much time to run up, and I can just be standing on top of them for as they wake up. And if I'm standing on top of them, that means I get to like, I get to be the one that chooses what kind of pressure is going on. So like, I can run up and I can do a throw, or oops, or I can mistime it and get hit by his kick. But I can go for a throw, or I can go for a regular hit, or I can go for a dash over. A lot of the time, um, I actually will just go like dash in from the air because it does leave you in an airborne state. So I can do an air dash, and then I'm just straight on top of the opponent already. And um, because you're so close, you can actually get a um, like a jumping heavy slash if you want to get a little bit extra damage. Though I don't suggest you do this all the time because sometimes you can get a side switch as you saw before, and um, you know you lose your plus frames on wake up. So it kind of it kind of defeats the point of it a little bit. But um, a lot of the time, if I don't want to throw my butterfly after it. I'll just dash up, and then depending on how close I hit the Ko from, um, it might be a it might be a cross up, and I might be on the other side, and then they have to block the other way, and you know it's a bit of a mix up like that. But I'm also just like straight on top of their face, so I can go for a throw. I'm just right there. I have so much time. I can go for anything. I can get my meaty super easily. Um, if you know what a meaty is, it's basically just timing your attacks as the opponent wakes up so that they can't do anything. But it's just, it's so good being able to get this hard knockdown and chase after them. It, it's its amazing. I love this move so much, even though it's kind of not that great because you can't hit grounded opponents, which is kind of weird. But it makes up for it in that it's just super amazing. It's just so good. <laughs> um, and another use for it is that you can actually kind of, you know, be kind of sneaky and use it in pressure, because it does put you in the air. So a lot of the time the opponent thinks like, haha, you missed it, I guess I can punish you now, I'll wait for you to land on the ground, and then like, punish you and get a cool, my cool, like, close slash, big beefy combo. But what they don't know, is you can actually do jumping attacks as you fall down. Basically any of them. Leave them up. I mean, even dust, even though you're probably not going to do it, because it's kind of weird. <laughs> But you can do anything after it, and just like fall down and whack the opponent. A lot of the time, I'm, my go-to is just using slash, because you know it just works the most consistently for me. You can get a combo from it super easily. But like, it's super good, like, because if your opponent thinks, especially if you're doing this like weird like mind games here with the punch, punch, punch into like forward heavy slash. Sometimes I just go like punch, punch, co, and then they're like, what the hell just happened? And then they don't react to it to punish it, or they don't. <laughs> or they're like, oh wait, should I punish that? I don't know. And then I land on them, and then I get my jump, and then I get, and then I get my jump attack, and then I get to go for a combo, and then blah 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 blah, and then the opponent's melting, and they're like, why did that happen? Because you know, you just just like I said, he's kind of basic, but you can throw in these random spicy things to just keep your opponent on their toes, and it's really important that you do that because otherwise you're just like a super basic character. Now, okay, I think that's all we have to say about Ko. It can be used in pressure, it's a great anti-air, and it has a spin at the start. Which also makes it an even better anti-air, because even if you're like just doing it preemptively, if you're like, I think my opponent might jump now, you can do the hell down version, and if they do do a grounded attack, well then you get to do the spin, and then you counter their ground attack, and if they do jump, then boom, you do your Ko, and then blah 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 blah, you win, you win. And if they just stand there, well then like, you get to do your jump attack, and like, whoop, kick him out of the air. It's a really awesome move. Super amazing. Okay, and similarly, his um, spin can actually be used in pressure quite quite effectively. Because um, if they think you're going to go in for Fujin or something, you can just do a little bit of a 12, and then you're like right in their face. Especially after his 6H. Because if you do it after like the second hit, or even the third hit, I think, like you're left right in front of the cone, so you can go for a throw. So if you're doing something like this, like maybe the, you know, you've done stuff like this, you just throw, and they think that this third hit's gonna hit, because like obviously, or like the second hit's gonna hit, but you actually cancel it, and you go in for a throw. Or you cancel it, and you hold it down, and they're like, oh, I know you're gonna, I know you're gonna try and cancel it, and then they press a button, and then you end up spinning through it, and then you counter their button, and, or you can go for a throw, and if they, if you know that they know, <laughs> If you know that they know you're gonna go for a throw, then you can not go for a throw and then go for a regular combo. It's crazy, it's amazing, I love it so much. And so, I think we've talked enough about his special moves. 
and we can start talking about his overall game plan using all of his stuff that we've talked about. Actually, let's quickly talk about his supers, because there's not... The first one's not too complex. It's a projectile super, so if you cancel it, it um it will be a purple RC. So you can kind of like attack while it's out, which can kind of be useful to you know get a little bit extra damage. Um, and depending on where you are, you can get a combo or like just some extra damage before it wall breaks. And yes, it does wall break, so you know you can use it at the end of your combos after they get splattered onto the wall to get a bit of extra damage before they get sent to the other stage. Um, but honestly, it's not too great. Sometimes it messes up and has a kind of weird hitbox, but you know, it's a super. <clears throat> it's not invincible, I don't think, but you know, it has a pretty large hitbox in front of it that's disjointed, so sometimes you can just throw it out for fun to catch opponent trying to do something from far away. But the super that's really interesting is his parry super. His, um, like, his slash super. It's really amazing. And if you're playing Anji, you need to go into training mode for like at least half an hour and practice doing really quick supers, because you want to be using this a lot. You're going to be... <laughs> you want to be able to throw it out super quickly, so that you can hit your opponent with parries super consistently, because it's amazing. So, um, I think I still have Kai on doing a kick or something, right? Yeah, so, anytime your opponent presses any button, except for throws, actually I think it maybe even throws, I'll check afterwards, but basically, it's a parry, and it's a big parry. It's a lot of damage, it breaks the wall, and 220 damage from a single parry just for your opponent pressing anything. So, obviously, this has a ton of uses. You can use it on Wake Up, just like an invincible like reversal super, you, but you can also use it in Pressure, like an invincible reversal super. So, like, if the opponent's doing something, like maybe Kai is doing his like his big like overhead kick thing, you can just be like, pop, super, and then you get to parry it. And then you get all this massive stuff. And it can actually be Roman cancelled, unlike his other super, because it like is a physical hit. And as you can see, if you do that, you get some crazy damage. 303, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And I just did that on the fly. That's probably not even an optimal combo. That's crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, and as you saw, it wall breaks to do a lot of damage. And... It can even parry projectiles, which is kind of ridiculous. It can have some slightly weird, um, like, hitting if it hits, like, from not right in front of the opponent. But he will still try and do as much of the super as possible. But, man, it's just crazy. It does a lot of damage, and you got to make sure you're throwing it out to make sure the opponent's kind of scared to press buttons. Because if your opponent is scared to press buttons against you, you go gorilla. You go crazy. You go with all of your ridiculous Fujin pressure. Your co pressure that isn't real, like where you do like this stuff. Like if they're scared to press buttons, you get to go wild. You get to do your like weird spinning things. You get to do your plus on block stuff with Fujin. They're respecting you and they don't want to press buttons because they think you're just gonna pop a pop a like a half health super parry. They're gonna be scared and you get to go crazy. You get to go for your throws. You get to go for your Oki. You get to go for everything. And like I um. Like, you know how I was saying that, like, a lot of people like to, um, mash out of the second hit of the, um, Shitsu, so, like, in between the first and second hit, a lot of people press a button to try and, like, interrupt you and get rid of the bird. Well, you can. Um, oops. You can run up and do the parry. I'm kind of messing it up. You can do the parry, and then they get hit by that, and then you get to this huge chunk of damage just because they wanted to, like, mash out of it. It's so ridiculous, and it's so satisfying to hit. Like, there's nothing more satisfying than when you're on your, like, your last tiny health of damage. Like, your, like, your last pixel of health. And, like, your opponent's pressuring you in the corner, and then all of a sudden, you throw out one of these, and you get this awesome effect, and it goes... And then you get this massive, awesome parry attack, and then you completely destroy them and take away half of their health. It's... It's that's solid stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, okay. And because this is Guilty Gear Strive, we have to talk about Anji's counter hit properties and all of the different stuff he gets from his different counter attacks. So if you didn't know, there are three types of counters in this game. There are light, there are medium, and like mega counter attacks, the really big dramatic ones that put counter all over the screen and have a big time stop. So light ones don't have any time slowdown at all. Medium ones have a slight slowdown. And, um, but like they only have a slight slowdown on the first hit, and mega counter hit attacks have a huge time slowdown, 
and they even have an extended... So the move that you do itself, so this Heavy Slash will have more hits done, and the move I do after it will also have more hits done, which means that if I do something like this, my Fujin actually combos into the overhead because the Fujin gets extra hits done. So it's basically, with the heavy counters, you get double the time slowdown, and the medium ones you just get a bit of time slowdown, and the light ones you don't get any time slowdown. So all of his um, light counterattacks are his punches, all of his punching buttons, including his jump, um, his throw obviously doesn't have a counterattack. His kicks both are light, and his jumping kick, and his jumping slash is also a light counterattack. Um, yeah, and then his mediums are his close slash, his far slash, his crouching slash, and his um, 6p. And I think that's all. Oh, and his jump H and his jump D. I can hit that on the ground. <laughs> There we go. So those are all of his medium counters, and then his heavy counters, or his ultra mega counters, are his heavy slash, his crouching slash, his crouching dust, and his 6H. So, now that we know- oh, and also his Fujin is a heavy counter, um, his Ko is also a heavy counter. Oh no, it's a medium counter, oopsie. So, yeah, Fujin is a heavy counter, Ko is a medium counter, and Butterfly is nothing. Is a light counter, nothing happens when it hits. And also the follow-up, um, Nagiha, the slash version, um, follow-up to Fujin is a medium counter hit, and the overhead is an ultra counter hit. I can give that to Joe. There we go. It's a heavy one as well. So, let's talk about what... We're not going to talk about any of the light counter hits because they don't do anything. We'll just quickly talk about how all the hit properties change of the medium and the ultra counter hit attacks. So, starting with close slash. When you hit a close slash counter attack, you always want to go into your crouch heavy slash because now that actually combos. That means you can get some cool stuff going that you didn't used to be able to do. Because normally this doesn't combo at all, um, as we talked about before, but now you can do that. And you can get your combos going like this just for free now. So you don't have to spend any meter to get the opponent airborne, where you usually have to, you know, do a Roman cancel after the, the slash version of Fujin. But now, and depending on how close you are to the wall, you can just get a super free combo going just by, you know, doing Fujin after the Heavy Slash. And yeah, depending on how close you are to the wall, you can get a bunch of bounces, bounces with the Fujin, and then do to do super easy damage and very high damage. Same goes for his Crouching Slash, which basically, it's basically the exact same. You can cancel it into his um, Crouching Heavy Slash now, which, you know, means you can go into Fujin, maybe, I mean, Ko, maybe you want to Roman cancel that, or maybe you want to, you know, just do his, his Fujin, whatever you want. If you're not in the corner, you're not going to get huge combos. Um, but, you know, you're still going to get a lot of damage either way if you choose to run and cancel. And also, on the close slash, if you want to, you can cancel into his dust and bounce the opponent that way. They don't actually get into the huge dust animation because that would be overpowered, but they get launched in the air. And, you know, if you're in the corner, you can get a kind of interesting combo going this way. Which does pretty decent damage, but I don't think it's anything more that you wouldn't get from just doing this. Oh no, it is a little bit more, so yeah, you have that option if you want to do that. And his crouching slash, yeah, it just you just go into crouching heavy slash. Um, his far slash, on count hit, you can actually go into Fujin, finally. Normally, this doesn't combo into Fujin, but now it does. Um, obviously, it can also combo into crouching heavy slash, depending on the range, but... A lot of the time that you're hitting, like, Far Slash, you're not going to be in the range for, like, Crouching Heavy Slash, but if you are, you know, may as well, because it back combos now. So may as well go for that if you are in range, but otherwise, you can actually go for Fujin for once, which is fun that you can actually finally do that. Um, his Jumping Heavy Slash, um, basically just like any any jump attack with the time slowdown, it just, you just get... You can just run in afterwards and just do your regular bread and butters afterwards. So it just gives you a lot of time. You can just run in and do your close slash. Um, 
And get your bread and butter on those guys. And, or you could drop them, like me, because I like doing that while I record, apparently. Um, and you can also... Are there all those? Those are all of his medium ones. Doo -doo -doo. Um, I'll do specials last. And then his heavy counterattacks, obviously his heavy slash. Now, these mega counterattacks, because they have such an increased time stop and it lasts for longer, you can actually get some pretty interesting things with Anji. So first, you're, um, if you get heavy slash, you can go straight into Fujin. But because you have that extended time slowdown, you can actually just combo into the overhead, naturally. Usually that doesn't work at all, but, but now it does. So you can just combo instantly into the overhead, um, you know, without having to spend any meter like you normally would. And then boom! Big damage, very free. And the same applies to um, his 6H. But beware, on the 6H, you have to do it on the first hit that actually does a counter attack, or else the time slow effect will be done by the time all the three hit it. So you can just cancel the first hit and then cancel it into the overhead and blah blah blah. Rinse and repeat the same thing that we just did then. But another option that's kind of slightly more interesting is after these big time slowdown things, not only can you just combo into the overhead for free when you normally can't. You can actually do charged Fujin. So, you have so much time, I can actually hold down Fujin the whole time until it does that big pop up. And then, I can do the jump follow up and then get these combos going, which I think are pretty cool. So, you get to do that off of a charged Fujin and then jump, up, um, jump towards them with the kick follow up and then do whatever you want after that, depending if you're near a wall, or you want to finish with Ko, um, you know, to get the hard knockdown, whatever, whatever. But, uh, yeah, and that same obviously applies to the 6H, you can do his charged Fujin after the first hit, leap after them, and get some kind of combo going there. So, that's pretty interesting stuff. Now, for his crouching dust and his crouching um, heavy slash, they are slightly different because you can't go into charged Fujin because it doesn't actually have that much hit stun to let you do that because that would be on the floor beforehand. Um, dust is a little bit tricky, you don't really get too much. You can get a, um, like a charged Ko off of it, which is something you, you, you normally can't do. But unless you're near the corner, there's not really too much you're gonna get. Um, But it is just kind of nice, I guess you can do that. Um, and you get a little bit more hit stun off of the coal. But if you are near the corner, you can get, you know, some combos going if you catch them with your kick. Which is kind of cool, because you normally can't do that off of your dust. And then go into kind of the same, the same kind of combo path that you do before, but you can do it off of your dust, which you normally can't do. Um, heavy Slash, you can do the same thing. You can go into his coal. Um, but because it puts them so much, so much higher in the air, um, you can actually get like a dash up into like your air attacks if you're really fast. If you're really really fast and sometimes you have to be a bit further away. Um, but it's unlike getting a roll co, you <laughs> it's pretty tricky. But um, I would suggest just being up close and doing this and then they're close to you and then sometimes you can get a kick. But what I find is kind of, so like, kind of like with the dust before, like this, like this. And you get the kick, and you do like the same thing as before. I'm sure you can make it a little bit more optimal, but even that is a huge chunk of damage for a very easy, very simple combo. But, a combo that I kind of like doing when I manage to get a counter hit, um, Crouching Heavy Slash, which is actually surprisingly common, because if you do your Close Slash into Crouching Heavy Slash on block, there's quite a large, like, it, there's not an actual gap, but it, there's quite a lot of time because it's so slow. So the opponent starts to press a button after your close slash, and then they get hit by the counter hit heavy slash, and then obviously you can go for the stuff we were just talking about. Oh yeah, um, by the way, sorry. You can also just go for Fujin and like do a combo like this, if that's a bit easier than doing it off of the call. Um, but the cool combo is you can actually get your Shih Tzu out in time, and then you can PRC it. and get a cool combo like this. Which does a lot of damage. For a single RC, 243 damage is kinda huge. Like, that's kinda crazy, that's pretty cool. 
So yeah, I like going that for that combo because it's not often you get to use your Shitsu in a combo. Um, and you can do it from basically like any range you would hit the Crouching Heavy Slash, but usually you're going to be hitting it from up close anyways. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a cool combo that I like doing. And if you aren't near the wall, you can, you know, go for your your Ko and get the hard knock down. Even that's pretty, like, quite a lot of damage, and it looks really cool. It looks really cool, but, uh, yeah. So those are all of his heavies, I believe. Yeah, we did Crouching Heavy Slash, and... I mean, his dust... Like, it's not gonna do anything. You're gonna go for the... the fly up in the air anyways. But... Um, yeah, and we did 6H, it's the exact same as Standing H. So, let's go into Fujin quickly. When you get a raw Fujin on counter hit, maybe, I don't know, you're just trying to do it in your pressure and all of a sudden the opponent tries to press a button and you hit them with Fujin, or maybe you're doing the charge Fujin and they go to press a button. When you get a regular Fujin, obviously you can combo into the overhead, um, but because that's the, only the second hit, you actually do get the extended um, like hit stun on the overhead, and it launches them really far into the air. So high that you can just run up and do your close slash, which is something that you definitely couldn't do before. And then get a combo going that way. And you know, obviously, these combos that I'm doing aren't the only option. You can, like, <laughs> obviously there's plenty of options of different combos you can do, like, like all of Anji's bread and butter combos. There's many, or not many options compared to other characters, but you know, you can go into Cole instead, or... Why am I not listening? Why am I not <laughs> Hello? And depending on how close you are to the wall, you can do your co finisher into the jump dust and all that stuff. But, uh, yeah. And obviously, off of the held one, you can do the leap and do the same thing that we were doing before. Um, but you gotta be careful because there's so much hits done that you have to kind of actually wait a little bit or else they'll be in the air for too long. <laughs> You can get some kind of fancy stuff going like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> 231 for a raw Fujin. That's pretty cool. Um, and also, because there's so much hit stun on the Fujin, if you want to be a little bit fancy, it's a little bit hard to time, but you can actually get a close slash or a, like a kick just off of the jump and get it to combo. I'll just, it's a little bit tight, especially when I'm trying to record. But there we go. So this is also an option you have if you um if you want to do that. Maybe if you're mid-screen or like you don't want to spend any meter on it or do something, you do have the option of just doing this elite and then doing a combo like this. If you just want to do something simple, which is also fine, but if you're near the corner, you gotta go for those big fancy combos, obviously. Um and then the follow-ups of Fujin also have different counter hit effects, which I think I can show if I put my opponent onto guard only first hit. Yeah. So, if you get the slash follow-up of Fujin on counter hit, which does happen quite a lot, you know, people try to mash like they think you've delayed it so long, and then you throw it out at the last second, and then you get a counter hit. So if you get that a counter hit, um, you don't get a combo from it, I don't believe. Yeah, no, not really. But you, it does become a hard knockdown, which is something it definitely wasn't before. So, that's pretty cool, because that means you can put out your butterfly, or you can go for his, um, like, OP setups that we'll be showing in in a little bit when we get to the combo and, and setup section of the video. <laughs> but, yeah, so that becomes a hard knockdown, which is really good, and Anji loves his hard knockdowns. And the other option he has off of it, that is a counter hit, is the, uh, the overhead follow up. And this actually launches them so high in the air, if your timing's down point, um, on point, not down point, but you can actually get two close slashes, but I don't know if I'm going to spend too much time trying to get that because it's a little bit tight. Especially while I have recording jitters. Try one more time. But, yeah, if you can't hit that, it does exist, and I have done it a few times. Um, you, you know, can just go for the regular stuff. Um, because you have enough time to run in and get a close slash. Which is obviously not something you can normally do. But then, you know, you can do your Anji stuff and do your regular Anji loops. Close slash, into crouching, heavy slash. 
into whoop, okay maybe don't do that because <laughs> that launched them across there but yeah so and the other follow-ups of that obviously have you know a light count hit or no count hits obviously and i think the last thing we have to show is ko which we will need to make kai jump for so if you land ko on count hit which is something that is obviously going to be kind of common because you're going to be using it as an anti-air so, you know, if they're trying to press a button from the air, you hit them with Ko, which, by the way, is an exceptional anti-air. It's like, it anti-airs, like, from the, like, it's not even when he just does that attack there. It starts, like, instantly. It's ridiculously amazing. Like, yeah, it doesn't hit grounded foes, but, like, if you're in the air, you're dying against this move, because it's just so amazing. Um, yeah, so, if you hit it on counter hit, basically, it just has a lot more stun. So much stun that if you're up close, oh. <laughs> You can actually dash up and get stuff like this going. You can dash up and do your jumping. Oh no, I missed it. <laughs> you kidding me? There we go. But see, you can get big damage if you're near the corner and you don't mess up a hundred times like I did. And you can do some kind of fancy stuff like that, like dashing up and doing your jump kick until you jump dust. And then they get the bounce off of the wall and then cool fancy stuff ensues. But if you don't want, if you're like don't want to go for that fancy stuff, like me, because I mess it up, they are actually launched for so long that you can get you like a standing slash or a standing kick because they're in the air for so long. And obviously, depending on how close you are to the corner, will affect what follow-ups you can actually get from it. But, like even if you're over here, like in this corner, and like not facing the wall, you can at least get a Fujin and then like throw out a butterfly or whatever you want. And if you land it like charge down, obviously there's just even more hits done. So like you can get your like jumping slash, which is honestly a bit easier than the, the other couple we were trying to do before. And yeah, if you hit this one up close, obviously you have even more time to like do something. And but yeah, basically you're either gonna get like a standing kick into a combo and then get that regular stuff, or if you're further away and you like hit it from out here, you can like either just have time to like dash up and be on top of them, or you know, get some jumping attacks and hey look, I did it when you were further away. But yeah, off of Coke, you can get a lot more cool stuff. And his supers don't really change at all when you get hit from one counter hit because like this one's a projectile and the other one's a parry, so obviously it's gonna be a counter. Like <laughs> that's just how it works. But, Kai, please stop jumping. Anyways, that is all of Anji's counterattacks. Let us proceed to the next section. Okay, and quickly before we talk about his specific combos and setups that you want to be doing, let's just quickly talk about the kind of stuff that you'll be doing when you're like in neutral. And when you're not actually doing your combos, how you want to be behaving with Anji and what your general game plan is going to be. So, with Anji, you know, we're fortunate to have pretty long-range buttons, like his Far Slash, and his Heavy Slash is decently ranged too, and it hits both sides, but you know, it's a bit slow, so you're not going to be using it too often. And we have the Lord and Savior 6 Age. So, when you're in neutral, you're really just watching the, what the opponent's doing. Like, if they're li getting you time, or you have an opportunity to run in, you can do your run in and do your, like, Far Slash, because, you know, it's probably your furthest reaching button, apart from your 6 Age, but it's your fastest far reaching button so you know if you do a run in into that and like throw your fujin that's probably going to be your most like normal poking tool and unfortunately it doesn't combo into fujin but even if they do block the fujin afterwards you know you've got your fujin mix-ups that we we're talking about before you can be plus one block we can do a hop and go into a throw you can go into the overhead you can go to the low you know even if they do block it which is kind of sucks that they can block it after it you know you've got your Fujin mix-ups. But if you are wanting to be, you know, a little bit more committed and have, like, a little bit more risk, uh, you know, you can throw in your 6H when you're running up on the opponent. And this is a really good option if you're just trying to run in and get on the opponent, especially if you have some momentum. This thing is just a flailing hitbox that goes across the screen. Like, even if you just do a little run from, like, full screen, you're almost straight in on the opponent. And, like, there's this massive hitbox just flying towards the opponent. And it's very scary, and even if they get hit by, like, the last hits, then bam, you can easily hit confirm and go into your combos. And you're probably going to be splatting against the wall, because he travels quite a lot in his combos, and you get a wall break, and you're back in the neutral. So, yeah, 6H is basically the monster of neutral that you want to be using the most, because it kind of works like an anti-air as well, like, it hits kind of decently into the air. So you can kind of honestly just, like, throw this out if you know that 
you're gonna hit the opponent. It's a, a move that you really want to make sure you actually hit or like make the opponent block with it, because it is it is death on whiff. Like you just do this whole animation where you stand there posing for a bit, and like you're in counter hit state, you're gonna die if you do this without hitting him. So you want to make sure you do it a range where you are gonna make them either block it or get hit by it, which luckily is very easy because it's freaking humongous. <laughs> like that was three hits from all the way over here. Like it's a crazy move. And, you know, luckily it does combo into Fujin, and you can actually get your combos going. Um, <clears throat> then, also you have the option of doing your faster bu buttons. So if they think, if the opponent is running at you and you're running at them at the same time, you're like, oh crap, I need to do something fast, or else they're going to, like, interrupt my 6H. You can just run in and do your, like, your punches. Like, 5P if you think they're, like, jumping, or, like, uh, 2P if you think they're, like, going to crouch and your 5P is going to go over the head, because it does hit quite high, especially on short characters like Giovanna, um, who, like, kind of crouches down in a neutral stance. So, you know, maybe you just want to run in and do some, like, 2Ps. Because, like, once again, when you're sliding forward, they have a really amazing hitbox. You know, run forward, do some of these. And, because it's your, they're your punch normals, you can go into your 6H, which is the move that we all love and always want to go into. And if that manages to hit, then obviously you get a combo again. But yeah, really, you want to just make sure when you're in the neutral, you're throwing out your far-reaching buttons and making sure you space them in a position where they are going to block them. Um, because unless it's your punching normals, which, like, those you can kind of just throw out, like, willy-nilly, because they're pretty safe. But, like, your slasher and your heavy slashes, they they have a lot of whiff recovery, and you're going to die if you, miss the, if you miss your opponent with them. Um, you can use your kick in a similar way that you use your punches, like, in a safe... as, like, a safe poke. So like it's very quick and it recovers quickly so it's quite like safe to use and has just you know a slightly better hitbox than your standing punch and you can kind of mash it on whiff a bit more but um obviously it's not a button you can just run up and mash like your standing P so you have to be a little bit more careful where you use it and like know that you want to if you want to cancel it but yeah you're going to cancel into your 6H because of course you will actually no, or no you're probably going to cancel into your sweep if it hits as well because then you can um, go for your Ranji stuff or you can go for your butterfly, obviously. But yeah, your general game plan is neutral. Running in, doing your far-reaching normals, but make sure they hit, because for Anji, it really, really matters. More so than other characters, because he's got a lot of recovery on his slash buttons. Um, when you're trying to approach, like, maybe from the air, you know, you just want to do your instant air dashes. Make sure you've got your instant air dash button, like, logged, so you can just, like, press a button and you do the dash. And just do your heavy slash, because that's his, like, really good button for approaching from the air because it hits very low below him and he can like even if he goes over the opponent slightly you know he it's his like best hitbox of his air jumping button and if you want something that reaches a little bit further like maybe you're jumping from a bit far away you see his jumping slash because that you know reaches a little bit further and you have a better chance of like catching the opponent and obviously if the opponent's in the air you can just mash your punches because they're the safest button and you can anti-air them with that or you can use your dust if you think the opponent's jumping at you and you jump at the same time, because that'll stop you flying forwards and counter them with this massive umbrella that goes out in front of him. And in terms of his game plan when like you actually get a hit, um, depending on what kind of hit you get, if it's a close slash, obviously, you know, it's combo time. You get to go in for your combos. Or, or... Can get really beefy damage, so you really want to make sure if you hit your buttons that you you know confirm them into the actual combo because he he gets a lot of damage. And if as we'll get into the combo section later, he can you know do have some kind of tricky stuff and you know be a little bit fancy, but we'll get into that later. But you know also like if you get random things like your kick. You can do your kick into dust and make sure you know you're doing your mix-ups because a lot of the time you're going to be you know doing kick into sweep to get your butterfly out or kick into sweep and then get some like OP stuff if the opponent's mashing when you get the stuff and again we'll talk about this later but you know you want to make sure you hit confirming like all of your kicks and you know make sure you throw in a random dust now and then because you can cancel your dust from your close slash or your kicks and make sure you know you're using your air buttons correctly going into your dust, doing random mix-ups, and yeah, really you want to make sure that you're like connecting your gatlings, your gatlings, so like if you don't want to go for mix-ups or go for your like sweep into the knockdown, you really want to make sure you're gatling into your long, 
your long button, like your 6H, because that gives you a lot of time to hit confirm the opponents. You can really easily see if they get hit by it. If they get hit by it, you don't go for your Fujin combos. If they don't get hit by it and they're blocking, you go for your Fujin safe thing. And it's honestly the same input, so it's very easy to hit confirm. But make sure you do, because you're Anji and you not. If you're a character that can easily hit confirm, you want to make sure you hit confirming. But yeah, and then go in your heavy slashes and slash into heavy slash. And just, yeah. He's very easy to hit confirm, just make sure you don't miss anything or else it's honestly just embarrassing. He doesn't really have supers that you're gonna throw out in the neutral at all, because, you know. Except for this one, like, it can be a little bit useful, but like, honestly not that much. Like, you just use it if you want to style on the opponent. Like, if you make a hard read, they're gonna like, do something right in front of you, they can, you can use that. And obviously the parry is also a read. Like, if you re- they're gonna press the button at any point, you can carry them with that. But, I guess that's kind of a tool in neutral, like, if you think they're gonna do something that, like, brings them towards you, like, you know, stroke the big tree, you can throw this out in neutral, and counter her with that. But other than that, in neutral, you're either gonna be running up and using your far-reaching buttons, doing an air dash, or using the spin. And if you do a dash into the spin, it goes really far. And the spin is basically like an invincible dash. Not invincible because it can be thrown, but it's got guard points. So you're, you're armored against any kind of attack. And if it's any kind of slash or, or heavy slash or any or like a 6P, like you can just punish your opponent if they hit you with that. So like, it's a super good way of getting in if you're against a scary opponent like Ram or Potemkin who have really far reaching normals but have a lot of recovery. So a lot of the time you just do like a little bit of a run into the 12 and you're right in your opponent's face. And if they did press a button, then cool, you get a punish and you're right up against them. And if and if they press a lighter button, you can usually get a throw to punish them or, you know, get a throw to mix them up. And if they didn't press anything, then it doesn't matter. You've just twirled into their face and now you're, you're right where you want to be up with Anji. And if you're against an opponent that's just kind of like walking around and not really doing anything in neutral and kind of waiting for you, then there's no problem in throwing out your butterfly because like if they're giving you the time, may as well. It's obviously not something I would suggest doing it in most matchups because like it's a very slow projectile, it's very punishable, you're gonna get countered to death if you use it at the wrong time. But you know, if they're giving you time, eh, may as well. Go through your mix-ups, do some cool stuff, like <laughs> may as well. And you know. You can kind of fake it out if you think they're going to go for it and then you parry them with 12 or whatever, you can start doing some fancy stuff there. But just, you know, make sure you're paying attention to what kind of person you're playing against. If they have, like, throwing about really big buttons, like Ram throwing their fast slash and stuff, 12 through it, baby, or jump over it and, like, hit them from the sky and do something to counter them, because Anji can really counter people in neutral. Even though he doesn't have projectiles or anything, he has, like, an answer for anything. If the opponent jumps, go. If, the, if you think the opponent's going to jump, Charged code, because then, you know, you're holding it down, it lasts for longer, and if they do do a grounded button, then you're just going to spin through it. Because, you know, you've got the guard point at the start, so if you even just predict it, then whoop, okay, you do that, and even if they didn't jump, then cool, you can do, like, like an attack from the air, and, like, <laughs> hit them from the sky, then. And, um, you know, if they think you think they're going to throw out a normal, do your spin, if you think they're just sitting there, throw out this, and... Or you can just run in and do your, your normals that reach pretty far and like flail your fans around and get your pressure going because he's long, he's long hitting strings and very, a lot of safety and a lot of easy combos and you can easily hit confirm. So really, the neutral, the neutral's your game, baby. <laughs> if you're playing Anji, like you have answers to almost anyone's game plan in neutral and it's probably one of his strongest, like, strong suits. Like he doesn't have great tools just to like magically, like, kill you from neutral, like, like zone is like Axel or anything, but he has a lot of answers to other people's um, things in neutral, so yeah. He's got parries, he's got counters, he's got good jump normals, he's got anti-airs, and he's got a really slow moving projectile if they give you time for it. So what else could you need in neutral? I don't know. So make sure you're using all the tools effectively or else, uh, I don't know, it's embarrassing. Whew, okay, so now that we've gone over all of all of Anji's buttons, all of his specials and his super moves and his his everything, let's talk about what his combos and his setups and what his whole game plan is actually going to look like. So I'm sure you've seen his bread and butter combo is basically this: close slash into heavy slash. And depending on how close you are to the wall, so like if I'm not near the wall at or anything, if I'm not going to get a wall break, you do something like this. 
and then you dash up and you get your Oki, 171, and you're right up in front of the opponent, and you don't actually have to do that as well, you can actually just choose to do the, like, the butterfly at the end after you're, um, you know, you're quite far away, so you're not gonna get too much going, but if you want to throw out the butterfly, you can, or you can dash in on top of them, and then you get to, you know, go for your meaty attacks, your meaty close slash, blah 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 blah, but yeah, that's his very basic combo. I'm sure you've seen it a thousand times. You can make it a little bit more interesting by throwing in like a Fujin there at the end, um, if you want to get a little bit more corner carry. But basically it's always going to look like that, and that's what most of the people do online. If you are like mid-screen or closer to the corner, then you can get a bit more of a run-up and go for stuff like this. Go for your corner combos. So basically you end with Ko, and then do your jump and dust afterwards, and that will wall splat. And then you you know break the wall with whatever you want. You could use a super if you wanted to get a little bit more. But yeah, that's his basic combo, and it leads to a wall splat super easily if you end in co, and then just put you know jump dust at the end. It's super easy. Like you should never mess it up, and it's really good because it does a pretty good chunk of damage, and you just always get to get this big chunk of damage whenever you hit the opponent, and it's almost impossible to miss it up. It's impressive if you manage to miss it up, because it's a very simple combo and a big chunk of damage. And so yeah, that's your base combo that you're going to be using, but I am going to introduce you to some more interesting combo parts you can take. One that I personally have really been enjoying recently is doing something like this. So actually, Purple are seeing the slash follow-up to Fujin to keep the opponent on the ground, and you can follow up that way. And then here, you have a lot of options you can go through. You can just do something like this if you want. That actually does more damage than the regular combo that we just did before, and it keeps the opponent on the floor the whole time, and you know, keeps them a little bit closer at the end. Or if you want your hard knockdown, you can also do that. You can do something like this. That does more damage than the regular combo, and it's a little bit different, more interesting. And you can also change it. Oops. If you do the charged um, Ko, it, he actually whiffs the second hit of it, but it's still a hard knockdown, and it leaves the opponent right in front of you. Which, honestly, to me, is more helpful because then the opponent is right there in front of me. I've done a decent chunk of damage, obviously it's a little bit less because both of the hits of Ko didn't hit, but it's still a, like, you know, a decent damage combo, and it leaves the opponent in a hard knockdown right in front of you, which is not a privilege a lot of characters have. And Anji with a hard knockdown is a scary guy. Let me show you something that he can do off of something like that. Oops, I did not mean to do that, but uh, yeah, I guess that's an option you can do, yeah. <laughs> Um, 6H into whatever the heck that was if we're counting it. Oh my god. I'm getting recording jitters. It's pretty easy to do. And it's... But there we go. The opponent tries to mash once on wake up. It beats throws, it beats any kind of hit, except for obviously like a DP or reversal super. But it's like 80 and a bit percent for one bar, like 50% of your meter, only one R RC and they decided to mash once on wake up. And even if they didn't decide to mash on wake up, like, all you're doing is going, like, crouch into your Fujin, your charged Fujin, mind you, which if they, it doesn't happen to hit, you can get the jump off and get a combo off of it anyways. And if they do block it, well then, you know, it's Fujin. You can go for plus one block, you can go for your slash follow up. Like, you're not in a bad situation from doing this at all. It's crazy. So this is honestly like what I prefer to do over the regular combo, just to keep it a little bit more interesting. Because, you know, a lot of people have fought against Anjis and are used to the normal stuff he does. So if you start using different things, your opponent's going to be kind of scared. They're going to be like frightened by all these new setups you have. So you want to kind of do these new things to make them fall for it a lot more. <laughs> See, like, oh, so much damage. So yeah, this is my personal favorite. It's going for the hard knockdown right in my face. And then, you know, obviously, because I'm right there, I can, you know, just go for a throw. Go for All the other stuff that you can do when you're right in someone's face. And it's, it's really fun stuff. Or, you know, obviously, I can throw a Shih Tzu if I want. And, you know, other options I can do if I want to do something is I can do into a sweep to get the Shih Tzu. And if I do close slash into sweep, it kind of leaves you at an okay range where you can do Shih Tzu, where you're not going to be hit by d most DPs. Oops. 
Then you get to go in for your Shitsu pressure or your Shitsu combos or whatever you're doing. <laughs> and it's kind of crazy. So I really like this option. So if you're not sure what I'm doing, I'm just doing my close slash into heavy slash into Fujin and the slash follow up, but I'm cancelling the slash follow up before it hits with the purple RC. So you can kind of see there's that little blue puddle on the ground when I do the purple RC. That's the startup of the slash follow up, but it's not coming out because I'm cancelling it and going into whatever else I want after the two. So probably not going to do that. Um. But you just have so many options off of this, so many more options than you do off of the regular one where you just do this, and then you run up and go blah 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 blah, da da do, and you get that. Because then you can do stuff like I showed before, where you get the into this thing. Oops, I messed it up. You can get the hard knockdown right in your face. You can go for a sweep, which is another hard knockdown that leaves them a little bit further, and you can go into your Shitsu super well. You can also use it to go for little gimmicky stuff like this. They see the low, and then you actually end up going for an overhead. And then after all the like particle effects off of like you know the purple like RC stuff, like and they think you're gonna go for a combo because you know you've been doing all these like weird combos off of it like that. <laughs> They're not gonna be ready for that that dust in the middle there. So you get this massive dust combo off of what would have normally been a normal combo and you get to throw in a sneaky dust. It, uh, it's just so cool. Because like they might think that you're just trying to go for like low kick into low sweep off like in the combo. But then you actually end up going for into your dust. And then, oh, it's just so satisfying. You get big damage off of your dust, obviously. It's, it's your dust. And yeah, I just love this combo path a lot more, because you just have so many more opportunities to get A, more damage than the regular combo, and B, you can do a lot more tricky, gimmicky, fun stuff, and you have so many more options, and it really puts your opponent in the blender a lot more, I feel. Um, and a quick note on the normal combo, this one, you can actually do more damage if you delay your RC a bit to make it a purple RC. Um, because then the hit of the red RC does scale your combos a bit. So if you want to get max damage off of this regular version, you can delay the RC a little bit. There we go, 182 versus 170 something. So that ends up actually being quite a lot more damage. And obviously you've got the hard knockdown, so you can run in and do stuff like this again. So if you're wanting damage, do that bread and butter version. If you're wanting um, do the bread and butter version with the like little bit of a trickier RC because you know this leads to more damage. This is like the most damage she gets for a simple combo. But if you want to be a little bit more tricky or have like easier damage, because like this is the lowest damage and super easy. But this is a little bit more damage, a little bit more complex, and can lead to cool gimmicky stuff. And uh, this one is the most damage, but doesn't really have any, like, no, like, gimmicks except for, like, you know, you get to the hard knockdown. And, uh, yeah, so those are his main combo routes that you're going to be using. Where stuff gets interesting with Anji is your after combos, and how you finish your combos, and how you deal with situations like your setups, like, when you have a situation where you throw out your Shitsu, how are you going to capitalize from it? So there's some cool things you can do, like maybe if you've like done your sweep into this, and you throw it out, and you know your opponent's going to get hit by it, you can actually combo into your um, overhead follow-up, uh, thanks to the butterfly. Because if you do the Fujin in between both hits, the butterfly hits in between, and then you get to get your overhead follow-up as a natural combo for no meter. So if you know your opponent's going to get hit by it for some reason, like if... You, like, if you just know they're gonna keep mashing or doing something and get hit by it, go for that. You can get that super cool free combo like that. Or, um... Yeah. That's the cool combo you can get off of Shitsu, but obviously also you can just get, like, your regular combo start to do a lot more damage as well. Like, even that is 166 for something so simple. It, it's ridiculous just for getting the little bit extra hits from the, uh, the Shitsu, which is crazy. But, um... Yeah, let's get to some real cool setup stuff now. So, his setups mainly work, or they, they are all based off of his getting hard knockdowns. So a hard knockdown, you can either go for your Shitsu, or you can go for an OTG Fujin, or you can go for 
an OTG low punch. And they all have their uses, and they're all useful in their own way, and let me explain why. Let's do the more interesting ones first. So, OTG Fujin launches the opponent kind of back. It's not an actual proper hit, but if you do the jump after Fujin, so the kick follow-up, so you can actually go for your close heavy slash, your close slash, and it's guaranteed. Unless they do, a th I think it even beats throws, but it beats any button they press. Um, you can get your close slash, and because your close slash has a time slowdown thing, you can actually get your close slash into low heavy slash. Like you can get standing close slash into two H, which is normally something that doesn't combo, but when you hit them on counter hit from this leap, because if they're mashing from it, oops, this actually works now. And you can get some hell of damage from it. I think you could actually even get more if you do something like this. Oh, close. Look at that. 211 damage. Just because your opponent decided to mash on your wake up and didn't respect your weird OTG Fujin stuff. Because honestly, it doesn't look real, and your opponent should mash because you've done a weird OTG stuff, so. Theoretically, you should maybe be punishable, because, like, you know, you've removed some of the hard knockdown and stuff, so, you know, they mash or they try and do a throw or something, but, you know, you do the leap, and then, boom, you get a count hit combo, and it, it's crazy. So, yeah, that's a really good one, and the next one is kind of similar, except you do a low punch into your charged Fujin. And this is a similar thing, it works on if your opponent is trying to mash on wake up. And this one does, for a fact, beat throws. Uh, whoops. If I make my opponent throw here. So keep in mind, throws are the fastest button in the game, so this just proves it'll beat any button that they do except for something that's invincible. So if they're just trying to mash any kind of button on wake up, which is super common by the way, mashing throws on wake up, or mashing like low punch, or mashing pu mashing anything is super 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 common on wake up. So if your opponent's doing that a lot, do this. And you get that huge counter hit all across the screen. You get the big slowdown. It's very obvious if you get the counter hit. And if you do get the counter hit, well then, watch watch the, the damage that you get. And I don't even know if, know that, if that was optimal. But 201 damage and the awesome like counter slowdown. I'm sure there's more d damaging stuff you could do there, but that was a super easy combo that I just did like off of my head. Just like, it just came together. Like you can just do that. And obviously these work off of any of his hard knockdowns, so his throw as well. He can just run up and do this. Uh, oops. And, you know, if, you, if the opponent is kind of getting good at, like, dealing with your, like, shih tzu, your butterfly stuff, then go for these. These are really, really good. These are so powerful. And you need to make sure you're doing them. And especially, and it kind of really boils down to if you're paying attention to what your opponent does on wake up. If there's someone that mashes buttons, go for these 100%, because you're going to melt the hell out of them. But if there's someone that's a lot more patient, then your final option is obviously doing your shih tzu stuff, which is, you know, your classic tried and true Anji stuff, where, you know, you just make sure you're spaced correctly, because if you do it too close, like if I do this, it'll go behind him, and if I do it, even if I delay it, and I do it right in front of their face, a lot of characters, like with DPs and stuff, can just punish you, and it's not a fun time. So a lot of the time you want to make sure you're like, you're doing the sweep from like over here and then do it like that and then you get to run in and do your combos or do your pressure and as we like when we were talking about the shih tzu your mix up is basically endless when you throw out the butterfly if you manage to throw it out successfully like you just get to do whatever you want so i throw out my shih tzu and keep in mind that there is the gap in the middle there so if you throw out something in between then you get to go for some like good true pressure there but basically, you know, run in dust, run in low kick it. Oh, I don't know why I wasn't running there. Low kick into dust, low kick into sweep. There's just so much mix up you can do, and obviously, if you get the low kick into sweep, you can do it again. Um, you can actually even get a throw in between both hits of the thing. So if they're just standing there blocking, you can throw them, get another hard knockdown. Maybe this time, instead of going for the um, instead of going for the butterfly again. You actually go for that 
reset off of the hard knockdown. There's just, he's got a lot of things that he can do off of his hard knockdown, and you've got to make sure you're mixing it up so that the opponent gets mixed up. They can't know, like, because if you just keep doing the butterfly over and over again, even if it's working, it's going to be boring, and the opponent is slowly going to learn how to deal with it. You don't want that. You don't want your opponent to know what you're going to do. You want to keep switching it up so they have no idea what's happening. So you, you can go for this one sometimes, and you beat their, like, mashing on wake up. And sometimes you want to go for your, like, for this. So, like, if they, if they are, like, realizing, like, oh, he's, like, OTGing me and, like, getting a huge counter hit because I keep mashing on wake up, okay, I'll just be a bit more patient. Then if you throw out your, your Shih Tzu, then boom, you get to go in for all of this pressure. You can go in for throws and re rinse and repeat all over again. It, it gets really wild. You get to go for your dusts, you get to go for your sweeps. Um, and like while, well, you know, shit is going on, you can do some like staggers and stuff. It, it's really scary. <laughs> it, it can be really scary for the opponent trying to block all of this, and that's what you want. You want to make them scared. And obviously on top of all of this, he can throw in his parry at any point. Which, if you think they're going to try and mash out of whatever you're doing, uh, I mean, A, they shouldn't be, because if you're like, like, if you're like training them enough, like by using these things, that like, counters them for trying to do that. So you have this one, so yeah. I'll just repeat your options. After your hard knockdown, you do a low punch into charged Fujin into the jump, or you just do Fujin into the jump, so the Fujin is what hits them on the ground, and then you do the jump, and then you hit them with your close slash, and then you get a combo like this. They're both wild, they're both ridiculous, they're both amazing options. Uh, and, like, it's good to use both of them, like, even though they're both, like, t used to, like, stop the opponent from mashing, you want to make sure you're switching it up, because, like, they're going to recognize, like, oh, if you do this, like, low punch into that, you're going for this thing. So then, one time, if you go for, like, this switch, and they're like, oh, what's going on there? And they don't realize that you're actually trying to catch the mashing, and, and you do, you catch the mashing. It's really fun. <laughs> And yeah, and then you stop your opponent from like mashing all the time, you get to throw out your Shih Tzu super free! Or you like, you get to go for your twirls, you get to go for your Ko into, like, drop down from above and then go from stuff. And that's just where Anji gets super fun and it's where he really excels. It's just like, oh, I thought this character was really basic and did like, like really basic stuff, just like regular strike and throws. But now I realize that he can do so many things. He can keep like OTGing me off the ground. He can keep punishing me for doing stuff. He can keep like, yeah, punishing me for like trying to press buttons. He can punish me for trying to block by throwing out his butterfly. Like, what could I do against him? And that's how you want them to feel. You want them to feel like they can't press buttons because you keep doing the twirl and you keep twirling through their buttons. So especially big characters like Ram and Potemkin that have really big but kind of slow, like, large recovery buttons, like Ram's Slash and Heavy Slash and Potemkin Slashes and Mega Fist and his um, Hammerfall, you can twirl through those. They're going to be so scared to press buttons because every time you twirl through them, you're going to get a punish on them. And then they're going to be scared to press buttons. You get to press your Butterfly. And it's just... It's, uh, it's so good. It's all about conditioning your opponent to do anything. And whatever they're doing, you can adjust to really hurt them. So let me show you some like some sequences that like super hurt the opponent. So if I put meet um health onto like um cage settings. Normal. So some normal sequences that you can do is something like this. So off of the combo that I like to do. So if I go for something like this. Um See this? That's like 80% of their life because they decided to mash once after your combo. Or you can do something similar if you do something like this. Um, I didn't actually need to RC there, I could have done like, you know, a slightly different combo of course. And that did even more damage, that was like 85%, like, you can get really ridiculous and you want to keep switching it up, so the opponent has no idea what the hell is going on. Like, and if you do want to keep it like... Um, like, 
Ah, it's so good. There's so many options you have. Or you can go for like something like this. Like if you want to, if you're trying to do your butterfly, you could do like. Actually, you can be, do close slash and then go into the butterfly. And if they're blocking it, you get to run up. Or you can go for some throws. And even just like a few attacks and throws, they're really melting already. Like even if you just get like a throw. Like they block the first hit and you go to throw. They've lost half their health. Like, uh, maybe even more than half their health. It's wild. And if they get hit by it... You're in the corner and they've... You're in the corner. You've just gone to the corner and they've already taken so much damage. So then if you get a... It's ridiculous. <laughs> Oops. It's crazy, it's crazy, and I love it so much. Or you can do this as well. And then going for a dust combo. Oops. Um. It's like you get hit them with some kind of mix-up like that. And then you melt them with a dust attack, and look at that! That was just a combo into a dust thing, and then boom, they've lost so much life because they fell for one mix-up. So that's how you really want to be playing Anji. You, you want, like, to snowball effect. One mistake of your opponent leads to them melting, and then they're going to be super scared, and then they make one more mistake, and then they melt again, and you want to, you want to make them scared of the spinning gorilla. Look at, the, look at this chest. How could you not be intimidated by this man? And that's how you want to make them feel. <laughs> Even though he's not crazy overpowered characters, according to a lot of like pro players' tier lists and stuff, you can really make him feel like he's overpowered by like just nailing your opponent down so much. And um, yeah, like even if you do stuff like this, you can get like a little bit. So depending on, um, let me just turn on counter hit. So let's just show some other combo opportunities he has. So as we said, regular combo is this. A uh, slightly more advanced combo that does a bit more damage is this. Uh, whoops. Does more damage because you don't get the RC hit. Um, the red RC hit. Um, a setup like close hard knockdown combo is this. And you can go for some kind of like, you know, throw on wake up. You can do the all this setup stuff we've been talking about before, or you can do this combo. Uh, oops. And you can also do... Um, go into like... A dust mix-up. And those are just the normal combos you can get from getting normal hits. You can get even more combos off of forced counter hits. So, did I turn on counter hit? And we'll just quickly show some counter hit combos. So if I get like, you know, in that other combo stuff that I was doing where like, you know, if the opponent gets off the ground, I do. I get my counter hit. Um, <clears throat> I get my counter hit close slash. That just happens if they match and wake up um, from any of these OTG setups. Um, it's really powerful, but he can get lots of like extra counter hit things um, depending on what he does. So um, if he just happens to get a counter hit regular fast slash, finally he can. Let me go back to mid screen. Finally, he can actually combo into Fujin, which doesn't sound like a lot, but finally we can actually get a combo off of this. So if you do see the slowdown, you can know that like, oh, if I go into Fujin now, I'll actually get the combo. You're probably gonna go into Fujin either way and just make yourself like safe on lock, like even if they did block it. But if you do get the counter hit, then boom, you actually get the combo. If you manage to get like this, this these big counter hits, which happen from his, um, his heavy slashes or um, his low dust, uh, you can get some crazy things by doing his charged Fujin. So I can do that, and then because they're in so much stun, I can just charge Fujin and then do the jump, and then... Uh, oops. And you're getting big damage from a single counter hit, single counter hit combo. Just know that you can go into Fujin into the overhead and then get your combos going this way. And then just boom, super easy combo, take you to the corner, bread and butter stuff for Anji. Just go into that, and voila! 
crazy. Crazy from single count hits. And it's very easy to react to it because it's this massive thing across the screen and it slows down and blah 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 blah. And as we said before, his slashes can combo into um, low heavy slash now um, when you get the count hit, which is not something you can normally do. Um, so as we you know were talking about before, like when you get this set up, then you can get combos like this. So, yeah, as you can see, the poor Kai has taken quite the beating in this video, and I honestly don't think I <laughs> have anything more to say. I think I've said enough and beat up this poor guy enough. Like, this is another setup, like this is one we were talking about before. Just everything he does so so much damage. So if you just get the one, make the one right decision, your opponent makes the one wrong decision, they lose half their life, then they get scared, then they do the wrong thing, and then they lose another half of their life, and they're, like, already dead. It's He's so scary. And, yeah, you just gotta make sure you're paying attention to what the opponent's doing to make sure you're doing the right thing to counteract the opponent. So are they doing, being super patient? Throw out your butterfly. Are they being more aggressive? Do your OTG stuff where you do... Or, if they're being aggressive, you can even just go for your spin all the time and go through all their buttons. If they're being aggressive on wake up, do, do these things. And beat their wake up buttons. Like, you can't mess it up. You can beat their wake up buttons super easily doing this stuff. And get huge count hit combos. Tell them that they know you can't be mashing buttons all the time. And then they can be scared to press the buttons. And if you notice they're scared to press buttons, throw out your butterfly again and rinse and repeat and go back and forth. Make them scared to press your buttons with this. Oh. With this. Use your parry that's amazing and, like, makes your opponent terrified. Oops. Okay. But anyways, that is all I have to say in this Anji Gut. Oh, that's a lot of throws. No, I wanted to finish on the cool counter hit. hit. Okay, um, I have to change this right now. Anyways, that was my entire Anji Guide. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I know it was long, but this is... I did say that it was the whole Anji Guide. All of his buttons, all of his specials, all of his combos, all of his setups, all of his everything. So, I hope you understand how to play the character a lot more. Because he's really fun, and using all of the things I showed you today should make you a lot better of an Anji player, and should make you have a lot more fun playing Anji, because you deserve to have fun using Anji, because he's a freaking badass. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something, and I hope you come back, of course. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching, I hope... yeah, goodbye, thanks.